elevation after the well, it's high time here to go on as far as but Wonton Dumpling, they found opportunity and they're coming in now. And Wonton Dumpling, they want it, they get it. Uh, the bin Wonton Dumpling just getting in the way of anything MDY wants to do. Exactly. Just MXF instead looking to find that opportunity. Wingman has an NBX, here comes the missile as well. But Wonton Dumpling in the front line now. Wonton Dumpling keep on winning. And comes to shove, uh, they are no... Your undisputed champions of Apex South in the ALGS. Such a good spot here. Provides any much coverage wow. for Popcorn. Gravity kicks down and out already. Brittle strike there. Oh, must come down. Might be one, might be one. Oh, what? Well, oh. Shady, he finds a target. Hey, that's going to be a... Punishing blow. Three is cover. Fly high to set by. The wraparound is perfect. What? No. Look to overextend. So does Kashir. Oh, 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 the pins go down. Oh, oh my god. god. Welcome back guys. This is another week of ALGS action here 
and it's long shot. If you're wondering, if you're like, hey man, where's that where's that smooth voice of Rain Day? Where's the uh where's the amazing analysis of of Deer and Tiff and and all the hype and excitement of ga- uh, Onset and Gaskin? Well, we're we're taking over. It's it's kind of like when uh you know we had you know Mad Maggie taking over or uh, you know one of the other town takeovers we had uh in Play Apex. Long shot taking over the Play Apex channel here today, and I am of course joined with Dax. Seem like there's so much competition and a two-way tie for the top spot. Yeah, I mean, even, uh, you know, other teams coming through uh, the preseason qualifiers and doing very well has, as you said, it's just made it, uh, yeah, like so clustered up there at the top, hasn't it? Yep, and I completely agree because we're looking at the results right now for the past few days and who's on top you got boogie gardens on one side but wanton dumpling having some of the highest kps in the whole algs making their mm. way to the top as well then you have the other teams of course that we always have to talk about legends gaming has to be one of them team burger having sharky making that return so renny team making waves even more teams like mdy white and mdy black to name a few it, it really feels like here in apex south the competition is just getting better and better and we're having a different flavor now to bring to the region and beyond yeah exactly um and yeah that's uh we've already had you know two weeks starting off here in year four so why don't we just get a quick refresher on how the year format as a whole works <laughs> um well uh obviously it starts off with split one uh, and then after that, we'll have the uh, the top eight teams from Split One going to our first LAN location, TBD. Hopefully, we'll get that mm-hmm. info soon. Uh, and then after that, of course, it'll be uh, the same format as previous years. But if you haven't been around for that, uh, that is another split. The split two playoffs, uh, and then we finish off with champs. But just did uh, you know explain that to you with some some nice graphics to help get it lodged in there in your brain. Uh, here's a nice little video to to show you that. The Pro League is comprised of two regular season splits. The Split 1 regular season features four regions made up of 30 teams, seeded into three groups of 10 teams each. Pro League teams will begin by competing in a triple round robin format, where each group plays a match series against every other group three times. After these matches have been completed, the top 20 teams according to the regular season standings will compete in the regional finals. At the conclusion of the regional finals, 40 teams, including teams from all six ALGS regions, will have qualified for the Split 1 playoffs. There you go, guys. Our format is set, but of course, we still have a schedule to keep as well. This is pretty much the third day of competition now, as we're going to check out the schedule coming our way. And of course, double duty yet again for our group today. It is for Group A, but Day 3 is upon us, February 3. Next week, of course, it will be another matchup, but it's on Sundays from that point on. So, Gino, you can check out, of course, Day 4, Day 5, as well as the finals. Those are on Sundays for our time zone. And of course, coming into those dates, there might be a different look to apex legends as a whole yeah as you said uh we've got a little bit of a change in the schedule in terms of uh yeah which days we're be playing on this year so yeah first three saturdays the last three day four five and the regional finals will be on a sunday so don't let that mess you up uh if you're trying to trying to keep it all in your schedule and make sure you catch all of the apex south action here um, yeah, and as you said, we'll also have uh, a little bit of a break, as you can see there in the middle, while we wait for, for players to get accustomed to the new season. But we can talk about that when it happens. Yeah, of course, it's in the future, it's in the cards, but let's not forget, of course, that teams will be whittled down once they make it to the finals. But on the other hand, something has been on the uprise here in 8 Packs South, and it is, of course, the incredible pricing that we have been granted now by the little Play Apex staff. So I'm very happy to say, 8 Packs South, we're here on Play Apex, right? Where we've shown that our prize pool has a effectively doubled and 
with that being said, it really goes to show that we are a major region. As you can see, for our grand winner, for our first place, it is 20,000 US dollars on the line. Second place there with 15K and going all the way to 1,500 for just being here for Apex out. Genome though, of course, you always talk about it. It's really the slots that these teams are eyeing on. Yeah, it is. And we've got more than ever with eight now for APAC South, as well as, uh, you know, two going out to some Chinese invitational teams. But, uh, you know, that'll happen a little bit later. Uh, you know, in look in the past, we've had, uh, you got to remember, this isn't the winner of the regional final either. This is the winner of Split 1 overall as a whole. Uh, you know, how you perform through the entire split. So sometimes that's been the same person. Uh, I think last... Uh, split two in year three, I believe it was the same with Moist taking out both the regional final uh, and that first place slot. But then if you go back uh, yeah. a split, it was, uh, I believe, Chicken Sandwich um, who took out the number one slot, but with Moist taking out the regional final. So those two can be different just to, you know, just to make it even more complicated. Um, but yeah, just throwing that one out there. 20k USD for the winner is, uh, yeah, it's certainly, it's, it's double what it's been in the past. So that's fun. Yeah, they were the old IPG squad from that time of a back out but let's check out of course how the points will be given to these teams there are two incredible point systems that we have here for for the maps for of course the day you get your place points there for first place you get 12 of them all the way to zero if you're 16 to 20 and one additional point per kill that's your kp and we see teams like wanton dumpling exploiting that and using that to wrap up their score and later on gina we also talk about things like league points right depending on what your scoring is for the day four the session you will get an equivalent of league points to to make sure that you're eligible for that land in the future exactly so this is how they translate for the overall day and you can see now uh yeah we've got this is the, the split points this is the overall standings for all of our teams that have played so far at this point they've all played exactly the same amount of games right we've completed one of our three round robins um, so it's even Stevens at the moment, and that means that teams like uh, Boogie Border and Wanton Dumpling that are up the top are looking absolutely fantastic to make it to LAN. And again, I'll just uh, harp on this. It's eight slots that get to go to LAN. So if you're looking at uh, who can qualify, um, that's where you should be drawing that line under outside at the moment. And gosh, it's uh, it's pretty damn tight there. I mean, if you look at, you know, down to the 21 points where X and Y is, uh, you know, there's still plenty of teams within striking distance um, of making their dreams come true. Absolutely. Nine teams are separated by two points. You have teams who do have found that recovery like X and Y. They had zero points for the first session. Then they got that second place to pull them up on the scoreboard. It also means teams at the very tail end of our leaderboard right now still a chance to make it because there's still a number of days upon us. But as of right now, Genome, I, I guess we're, we got to talk about our upcoming matchup. A versus B. A bit of a repeat from our very first encounter here in Apex South. And I, I kind of want to bring up some of the teams that have impressed us. We always have to talk about Boogie Borders and Legends Gaming, but there hasn't been a team from the preseason qualifiers that has really caught your eye. Yeah, so, uh, you know, if we're looking at the, the people who are sitting up the top of those, uh, the, the overall standings that we just saw that we might not have expected coming into this season, certainly one for me, was War Monster Firebird. I found myself saying their name a lot more than I expected uh, last week. These guys are the really starting to do too goes. well. You know, we've got Shark, uh, LK, and Azu, uh, and they're sitting at seven at the moment. So if they can keep this pace up, um, they are going to be making it to land, which coming out of preseason qualifiers, that would be incredible. That would be such a massive uh, achievement for a team who's going, uh, you know, as we keep sort of harping on about, like, it feels like even with, uh, you know, Moist leaving to NA, it feels like such a competitive split that we've got going on here uh you know they're playing uh, a very aggro comp right they've got uh the conduit the horizon the bangalore uh, a lot of the time so that means you know not scanning the ring um and yeah for them to just be able to to run with all these big dogs because we know that apex out you know typically has had a lot of extremely strong fighting teams even if the macro hasn't been that strong um it's crazy for them to come out and be able to perform at this level, Dax. Yeah, and I gotta say, they're a, such a good example of the influx of talent that is awaiting us in the preseason qualifiers for the lower leagues of Apex South. 
finally given their chance. So it's great to see War Monster Firebird doing so well. We saw on the leaderboard a while ago, I believe they're tied in sixth place with the likes of Outsides, with the likes of Serenity. But I kind of have to go at the very top of the ladder here, Genome. And we need to talk about the team that is making waves everywhere and anywhere you talk about if it's all about ALGS. We look at KP, right? We love to see Apex out as that region that loves to fight. And look no further when you look at this leaderboard, when you look at the players, you have a team like Wanton Dumpling that has been absolutely exquisite all throughout. Wanton Dumpling, I think we need to introduce them yet again. Pretty much the core of World Not Fair from last year. But you got Pikad or Gugu, you got Boring there, as well as XZZ or now known as Jackie Chan. His adventures continue on. And whenever we see Wanton Dumpling, they're just probably one of the cleanest fighting squads we've seen so far. There were moments like this last year in that World Not Fair roster, but in the offseason, they have cleaned up their act. They've taken fights so well, and I've been watching some of their POVs, especially in their great outings on World's Edge, and one thing that they do is since they know they're a triple threat that can kill as soon as possible, they usually have two on standby, allow one to reset, and then continue on with the pace. They're also a team that loves to play those mobile respawn beacons, come up with someone with red armor dropping down from the sky and keeping the fight alive. And we also have to mention some incredible stats so far. Wanton Dumpling, the most KP, sure, in Apex South. But we've also seen Gugu himself, Pete God, the most kills all throughout ALGS so far. That includes NA, that includes Apex North, that includes EMEA. And that's such a mean feat made by Wanton Dumpling. Yeah, I, you know, I saw some, some commentary around them saying like, you know, are these guys a bit of a one-hit wonder? But, uh, you know, I don't think that's the case, right? Because... It felt like that the first time we saw them pop off, but that was that was last year, right? Like that was an uh, that was more of an isolated performance. But now that we've seen them back it up a couple of weeks in a row in here uh, for year four, honestly, that's pretty cool. So, um, really, really excited to see them and and see if they can keep that uh, that momentum going throughout the rest of the season. I personally think they can. I think they've worked out a lot of the issues, the inconsistencies. Um, that stopped them doing better um, throughout last year, and yeah, it'll be it'll be really cool to see if they uh, can have a you know an amazing first time land performance like we saw you know from say MDY White uh, last year. Yeah, they're always a threat, and it does feel like they're looking for those recovery games. They get it, and suddenly they drop kills like 14 in a map, 23 in a map, and that's just a want on dumpling style that has truly raise some eyebrows throughout Apex out and beyond. But going back to A versus B, it's a matchup that we saw already all the way at the very start of our Apex out run. And we're gonna check out the beacon here at Storm Point. And I gotta ask you, Genome, anything that is particular to you? Because one thing always catches my eye when we talk about Storm Point and A versus B. It's that contestant lightning rod that really ruins a few games for the teams that fight. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? Um, we've, it, it feels like we've had teams contesting at Lightning Rod for such a long time now, right? Um, just for you guys uh, at home, White Flash. Um, so I believe this is previously uh, Ash. Ash Esports. Yeah, yeah, so they've had a change of organization, or at least they've lost their organization. Another one there, Heroes. Um, that was previously Kokoi, so... Uh, yeah, a couple of names to sort of get our heads around this week as people have switched over. Yeah, and I just want to point out real quick that it is Lightning Unicorn that lands on Devastated Coast. In the meantime, though, you get Overlooked Entertainment here over on the Down B. Streamfire still, it's a classic mill and a classic Dreamfire experience that everyone is looking for. And from this point on, near the center of the map, we do have to talk about Legends Gaming. Formerly Black Hand, if you guys haven't been keeping up with Apex out, one of the most interesting things that they do, Genome, is take the Trident towards the Bean. And Strafing Flame is really one of those carjackers that we see multiple times in a map like this yeah it's uh it's been a lot more prevalent i think all over the map actually in yeah. year four as people have really started to understand how important tridents are for rotations that's what makes places like mill such a strong poi to play from and it makes uh yeah it makes somewhere like Cedo station even stronger if you can uh you know put that trident rotational ability on top of the already great loot you get you can see Serenity there playing from Jurassic. Um, they have been playing fantastically from what used to be a pretty average POI and making it work really well. 
Yeah, they've really upgraded DPOI and Serenity upgrading the roster to a 3-0 with Legacy making incredible moments happen to allow them to win that A versus C matchup. But guys, it is time for us to get into the game. Store points await us. It's time for us to get into Apex out action. Here we are, Gino, back to the dropship and back to Apex Out. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. This is day three of Apex Out, and it's A versus B. We got 20 squads willing to do battle. Only one can come up the winner after six incredible maps. Well, I gotta say, though, we, we did 12.99 maps last time around, right? So I hope we get some <laughs> more incredible outings today. Yeah, look, uh, really hoping that we uh, we we get the uh, the, the twelve <laughs> instead of the thirteen maps today. That'd be uh, that'd be good for everyone. Um, as you mentioned, we've got uh, keep going gaming up against DNZ happening once again up at Lightning Rod. DNZ, these poor guys, they've been at Lightning Rod for just about their whole lives, uh, and they've never had it alone though. They've always had they've always had company. They've always had someone to sit around the fire and sing kumbaya with. And uh, this season. Uh, you know, it used to be a Dal Wolves. This season, yep. let's keep going again. Yeah, it used to be a little bit of foreign flavor. Now, it's a little bit more familiarity between Keep Going Gaming and DNZ. And I kind of have to bring up what we always mentioned from last week, right? DNZ had an incredible outing when they had their POIs to themselves. Keep Going Gaming was the first team from the preseason qualifiers to take a map win when they had their POI to themselves. And I, I gotta wonder... Something's got to give right by this point, but keep going gaming. They've taken the northern side, and they're staying there for the time being. Yeah, well, they've kind of squished the whole thing together, right? You know, you, we used to have Thunderwatch, and then Lightning Rob was a little bit further away. And it kind of feels like the teams are playing as if that's still the case right now, because, uh, you know, DNZ, they'll move south. They'll take the, the loot away from Thunderwatch, while KPG uh, are going north and taking sort of more of the original Lightning Rod. Uh, loot. Of course, you only get the one set of beacons now. That's kind of the big change is that, uh, you know, you don't get to rely on there potentially being another chance of beacon spawns um, when you're up there. So that's uh, that's one thing to mention. But looks like they're just going to be splitting the loot for the moment, uh, which, you know, some people say that's the, the smart way to play it. Um, and uh, a lot of the other smart teams are rotating very quickly into Barometer because it looks like that's where we are going. Yeah, they have such low priority. They're going to need to probably get the tribe to keep going gaming. And I wonder if they have that intel. I don't think so as of yet. But you mentioned it. We're looking at Barometer. And one team we kind of have to talk about moving forward has to be Heroes. Formerly Kakoi or Kakoi, if you know how Japanese or not. <laughs> you can choose how to pronounce it. But they've been picked up by an org here, Genome. And I'm really impressed to see a team who is making waves get the support that they need. Yeah, it's nice to see. You know, like there's a there's a lot of support for I think Indonesian, uh, you know, teams and players uh, in Apex Legends. They've often had, I think I remember you know the very first streams that Longshot did. Honestly, um, there were some Indonesian people putting out Indonesian language streams, and, and yeah, you know, they were getting a lot more viewers than we were uh, back there at the start. So it's it's good to see that people are still interested in that side of things, and the uh, you know we're getting uh, this team is getting rewarded. A, a couple of players who have been there just about that long, um, because they really are OGs of Apex out. Yeah, Devil United, if I remember correctly, but Legends, of course, also bring out the Gibraltar right now. So, we're, yet again, we're seeing so much more variety here. Over the week, Genome, I've been watching other regions, so I have been a believer of some of these more quote unquote off meta picks. I've seen a Revenant win in APAC North, I've seen a Newcastle win, I've seen Fuse, of course. And now with the Gibby online, what do you think is the outlook here for APAC South, especially knowing that this is a region that plays a lot of Watson? to begin with and how does that shake things up yeah so obviously uh you know if you've got the pylon down there it does mean that uh you can be pretty safe from the defensive bombardment um uh, yeah it creates a fun little sort of mini game if you get into that end game positioning where you've got defensive bombardment coming down like can you take out the pylon and then um and then be able to use that alt honestly though uh, Watsons will often have one pylon down and then have their ultimate ready to replace or even just have ultimate acceler uh, accelerants in their backpack, which means they can uh, just pop that and then a couple of seconds later have it ready to go. So I think it is weighted pretty heavily in favor of Watson between those two legends in terms of, uh, in, in terms of how that, um, that sort of works out. That said, uh, you know, Gibby's got his own uses, right? The bubble is still a very strong ability. 
Look, there are many lovers of the Gimme meta from before, and one thing to take note also, we've seen the shotgun be something to watch out for in Apex South. The Mastiff has done some damage, the Peacekeeper has done some damage, and talking to a few pro players here and there, they say that at least the shotgun, it's a decent gun to come out the, the dropship when you're respawn, because you rarely need attachment. But we're watching Barometer, we're seeing Akuma, and it's getting pretty crowded here in Barometer yeah, so far. So this is a send over here on the pylon, actually, onto Team Burger. Pricey was taking some shots with a 30-30, got caught completely off by no credit. Oh, but it does look like they've made it out here. So he, he was down, he got knocked, um, but they had just enough distance between them um, that Pricey was able to uh, get the res back up. So, oof. Uh, honestly, Burger, they've been struggling a little bit so far. It's uh, almost uh, had game one going awry from them because we know that no credit at this point is a scary team and an unpredictable team as well. Yeah, we, we know Team Burger, the legacy speaks for itself, especially with two time champion Sharky in that roster. Looking back at the results, two top threes basically, and a bunch of lower than top tens that made it a mixed bag. We're watching the barometer and Legends Gaming spotting out a bit of contact towards outside. They're down here by the bins a little bit of cover here for outside but for the time being legends decides to back away and get their own kind of place with the pylon in tow so we wait to see the next ring it continues to pull towards the south of barometer here see a couple of uh a couple of people just uh running it all the way underneath they're running the sewers and they're, as you can see uh very much in barometer lots of teams safe for the moment but it doesn't look like it's pulling to the sort of you know the northern buildings like sometimes it doesn't look like it's pulling towards bamboo either it yeah. looks like it will be probably more on top of maybe no credit who's down the bottom there so uh potentially those uh uh, they're playing one of the oranges right now. Um, could be a good position. And then you've also got Lightning Unicorn um, just to the south of them that were playing around Coastal Camp. Uh, and they've hit the next Ring Beacon. Uh, and I believe they've also hit the Scan because they're playing Crypto. So Lightning Unicorn could have very good priority into this next circle. I mean, Lightning Unicorn is one of those teams that we've seen utilize that crypto well to just get the information going. Legends Gaming, though, on the other hand, still poking, prodding, trying to upgrade their armor versus outside. They have some a good vantage point here, but the problem is the pro they're at the very edge of the western corner of the next ring. And we've seen from Legends Gaming, it's really that transit point that has been a problem, right? Some Someone like Easy Flash, he tries to fight, gets down when they call for disengage, and it's led to Legends Gaming dying a little bit earlier than they should. Has been a problem a couple of times so far. Akuma. Oh, here we go. Warm wants to fire, but taking some shots over at Dreamfire. It looks like they're stuck in the ring. Might have to rotate all the way back through some no take case. Roy actually popping uh, the, the Bangalore ultimate here to try and keep them at bay as Ems is trying to get revived, but I feel like this could be a very quick end here for Dreamfire. Yeah, War Monster Firebird there, a squad willing to fight outside the ring, and here we go again, War Monster Firebird, gravity lift is upon us, Roy though, back with red armor, ready to go for the fight, the 3MZ is already on the floor, energy barricade to try and keep them away here, Dreamfire has to stay in their own lane, as War Monster Firebird are the ones playing aggressive, they do lose one along the way, here comes the cleanup crew, courtesy of Azu, and it's just oh. a single player of Dreamfire trying to fight, no chance, and the struggles of Dreamfire, they continue here. Roy tries to play for the shield swap there, but, uh, you know, he wasn't giving him any um, ground to do that with. So just firing bullets straight into that while the other two come to clean that up. A nice win there for Walmart to fire, but, and again, we just have to praise the team fighting. Obviously, uh, it was very heavily stacked in that favor, yeah. uh, you know, spotting Dreamfire out in the zone. Obviously, not a, a very healthy place to be playing from. Um, but still, you know, taking big scalps, it happens just again and again, and I just get more and more impressed with this team. Yeah, that's why they were in your scouting report, and one thing that they have been trying to get better in is fought, fighting outside the ring and still surviving as a 3-0. Beautiful energy barricade also to keep Dreamfire at bay. Moving though to the other side, we got SWQ towards the coastal camp area. Keep going, we'll avoid them for the time being. And then we have seen no credit. Lightning Unicorn, White Flash right now in good positions towards the south side of Barometer. So you were saying a while ago, right? Lightning Unicorn, they got the intel and they got in the good position away from yep. everyone else. Exactly. And Gop Gaps is already set up. We've got fences. We've got a pylon down there. 
Um, so plenty of stuff for, for LU to look at. SWQ, they're hoping someone might be coming from Coastal Camp, but yeah, they're a little late to the party here. They, they, I don't think they realize that uh, KPG and LU have already moved on. Um, so honestly, the chances of someone else coming from that side are pretty low. Uh, need to need to check their rotational timings, I guess, if they uh, they want to be catching people up like that. Well, no credit. Mexius might get caught here. And he has no more armor. We'll just back on away for the time being. And he realizes all those buildings are occupied to the maximum. You got heroes, you got boogie boarders, kill devil, white flash nearby. But look at the ring now pulling in closer to the center of barometer here. And lightning unicorn yet again on the right marker for now. No credit after almost uh, causing issues. At the start of continued further in, and yeah, playing around the nut, they'll be fine there for one more circle, but unfortunately for them, it is not going to pull um, out towards the bridge, as you sometimes see. It is actually going to be further on top of Barometer and very much down near where LU are playing. Team Burger, um, I guess they're hoping it might be something of a bamboo circle, but you know, they, they seem to be more of that edge team uh, <laughs> this year, Dax, which has been um, a bit of a, a shake up for them and, and and you do wonder if that's maybe where some of their issues come from in terms of play style is that obviously you know Sharky uh, and Pricey have spent such a uh, a long time playing a very different play style um, to what we're seeing them go and, and frankly struggle with this split. Yeah and truthfully we've seen them have some slow starts many times in these past few days. Ring rush also for Sharky. It's still different when you're in actual ALGS competition and we're expecting Team Burger to make a mark later on but it's still getting very much so clouded in Barometer Serenity. The outside names to watch out for. Legends Gaming on the other hand staying away from that for the time being because they have their own fight to deal with. War Monster Firebird have made their way into Barometer and they're trying to find their own position here. Yeah, I mean, like, crowded's a good word for it too, right? Because if you think about this, we've got 19 teams left, and we're about to hit Zone 4. Uh, you know, if, you, if, that's your, if that's your measuring stick for quality, then, damn, this is a pretty quality game we're getting here, straight up. <laughs> Look, I've, I've really noticed, round 3, round 4, we still have more than 15 squads. Just another day in a back out from when these teams decide to play Zone and move closer and closer to the next few rings. God Hand, though, on the other hand, Flying high, looks to make an impact into the server, passing by Overlook at the same time being. Gets into the cover here down below, and they even set up the Dark Void to try and go for the rotate. But yes, it's caught immediately, and Dark Void doesn't do much to help him. His hands with the pot shot from afar, and God Hand needs to find a little bit of room to breathe here. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they got the cap wall off just before that all happened which bought them a little bit of time to get that res up and going but they're playing a, an odd spot here right it's like it's a spot that you play maybe end game when people don't have a lot of angles on you uh and it's hard for, for, for other teams to peek uh because they're going to get caught out by everyone else just, just sort of looking across in a crossfire but playing that this early in the game i'm not gonna lie that's a that's a tough call and i don't think it's one that's gonna work out for god hand yeah, Nakuma doing some damage here. Our triple roller squad is to make an impact too. It, it does feel like those are the two teams right now trying to get out of the midfield. I'd say Genom Akuma on one side with the returning Killapaws, Team Burger on the other with the returning Sharky. And speaking of Team Burger right now, they're the ones in a bit of trouble. DNC on the hunt here by the bridge. Smokes are out, but this wingman has a digi threat, and you know Joker's good for it. The hunt is on. Trinity of DNC sees the target from him. Pricey will get knocked on down as God Hand is eliminated off screen. DNC gets some good damage going. Yeah, they haven't been taken out quite yet. Oh no, the last shot comes into way though. He was uh, hoping to maybe run the red back with his teammates. But wow, Burger, one of the first ones to go out. So even though they survived that scare early against no credit, um, yeah, look, there's, uh, there's still no no love for them in the end. Yeah, it's the ailment of the laser station. Pounded by the low priority from Zeus Station. Akuma, though, on the other hand, they have to deal with Overlook Entertainment, knocking one down. It's VC already. Gun scan comes on in, though. But Akuma's ready for this one. Spikes into play. And Crusader, look at him go. Crack that arm already. Akuma back in a reset angle for the time being. But it's a 2v3. Overlook, do they push it? Akuma staying inside for now. The new look team with Killer Paws on uh, Horizon there. So. You know, kind of makes sense, I guess, with the swap over to controller. 
to have him on that legend, which has enabled so many roller players to do so much damage. And they're gonna make Ooh, that rotation. Yeah, they, they had the oh, advantage. No, but they don't have Crusader. Oh no, they do lose one. And Yukoi now trying to set up the Dark Veil to give Akuma a chance to breathe. Crusader, he's gone from this fight. But Akuma has different opponents now to deal with. You got no credit on one side. You got White Flash also in that Aeon. And Savior bringing in the massive to bring in the damage too. Akuma though, this is beautiful what? work from Killapaws. And just kills them all in front of him. Well done by Killapaws now, but the job's not done because Lightning Unicorn is marking him. That is ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I 2v3 there from Akuma? I mean, they go out regardless, but oh my lord, they go out in a blaze of glory with that highlight reel. We have an enemy out there. One of the wonders, really. An incredible MK player, an incredible controller player, too. Killapaws can do it all, but can't fight any other squad. So 13 squads are remaining as War Monster Firebird is also gone now. The ring, though. Looking to yes. find even more spots. You got Legends Gaming inside here, AGL too. Yes, they're the, the two teams in the best spots, and we're having a look at AGL here. This is where the, the last ring will be pulling uh, down here on this sort of, uh, you know, the Palm Tree Island. And AGL, they have the low ground, but then uh, if, if they can keep control of it, Legends Gaming will have the high ground overlooking this final circle. Um, for them, it's going to be a harder a harder task, I would say, because you're going to have a lot of people pushing up here. If an EMP comes through, they're going to all of a sudden be very vulnerable. At the moment, you can see the fences are well set up. Um, they've got a lot of defense. They're ready to go. Um, but, you know, there's teams like Bearclaw Gaming right underneath them. You've got teams like Serenity, um, who probably will be looking to push this or, or somewhere nearby. So... We'll just have to see if there's a, a, a wild card crypto here to come in and deal with this. Yeah, we've seen the EMP just blow up any Watson setup, especially if it keep going gaming now. They gotta go, 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 and they gotta move past the boogie borders. They also to kill Devil nearby and keep going gaming. Now taking a little bit of elevation. Heroes, though, is just so close beside them on the other end. There's the back tower in front as well, but KPG are struggling to make any kind of headway. Bible does get the armor back. Keep going gaming. They're trying to move. Heroes though evacuating. There's a scan as well. Ooh. And Lahim now with a rolling thunder. AGL though gone along the way. Heroes with the invasion point. Lightning Unicorn nearby. White Slash as well as Overlook's gone. And Heroes, they need to play to their namesake. They eliminate Lightning Unicorn now and Kiss and sets up a base for themselves. Oh my god, the fight for the south side was disgusting. And I think Heroes are going to be the ones that actually come out in front here as we see so many teams here yeah, there's white flash as well they had that building down at the bottom boogie borders still trying to to find their way into this one but they've lost racky so many teams like I, I mean i don't think there's a single clean 3v3 here there has been so many teams involved in every fight so far this is a great overview you can see the two remaining boogie borders members try to just um you know get some armor swaps and make it happen there on the north side and then heroes down on the south they have taken over a fantastic spot. Legends, they've actually dropped here to try and deal with Serenity, and they do manage to get that. So now Bearclaw, though, swinging around the zone to try and take Legends on. Have they struck at the right time? Uh, player K, though, down. Falcon immediately hexed, though, with a trade. And Bearclaw Gaming, they've been looking for this moment, but they can't find it as Legends holds off any kind of competition. Usually we see the team that drops, they will die, but Legends Gaming, they prove us wrong, not just once, but twice. Okay. So the armor swaps get there in time. Can Easy Flash pop the Medi? They need to get up. They don't have a horizon. They're going to have to go with the evac tower. You can see that coming out there. That's for Legends Gaming. That's the only option they really have to get out of their current spot. That said, Heroes still very safe behind all the rocks there at the back. They should have this game in the bag. I would have thought unless they catch some straight 30-30 shots coming out from Legends up the top here. They've already started to deal with boogie borders. And then outside, honestly, I would say the outside chance out of these three teams left to take home game one. Uh, watch out for the keyboard king himself. Easy flash. Incredible shot onto the boogie board side. Legends Gaming now haunting down outside as well. And heroes are just watching from a distance. But strafing flame, he's knocked down to the ground. Same can be said for easy flash. It's all left to player A as heroes takes this opportunity. They got a new sponsor and they get a new win now. Heroes will take match. Number one. 
Oh, man. That's got to feel great, getting signed. And then your first game, your first official uh, after getting signed in ALGS is a dub. I'm sure all three of our uh, Indonesian maestros there, as well as uh, the management team behind behind the org, are all going to have a big smile on their faces now, Dax. Yeah, it's super congratulations to Euros. And I do have to say, that was incredibly well done by them when they went away from their tower, dropping down to the likes of Lightning Unicorn, continuing that fight. It really goes to show that there was that potential from that Kakoyi squad from before. Heroes as an org saw it, they, they signed them, and they gave them the right support to get that result going. And I have to notice something also, Gina, a while ago. Lahim was so quick, man. Call him the Flash by this point, because not only did he get the hell out of any kind of problem but i also saw one of the fastest armor swaps i've seen today so it really just goes to show this hero squad with 12 kp as well i'm impressed by their results so far yeah i mean giving meta back is it i i guess i don't poof. i mean that's awesome i mean bang gibby watson uh and somehow you know that's that's zero scans right they've got no player scans they've got no ring scans there but somehow they still find their way into the best spot in the entire ring. And as, as you kind of mentioned there, it was, uh, it was a hard-fought one, right? When all the South teams came together, it was like, uh, you know, I've been, I've been watching some Hudson coaching, coaching streams. Uh, and he kept talking about, you know, like, you always want to be the bread in the sandwich, right? You never, you never want to be the meat. Mm -hmm. um, and it, on that South zone, it was like, I, I don't know, there, there was like a sandwich delivery line, like a um, going on there. And it was like, Someone would get sandwiched in the middle, and then like another two teams would come in, and then another two teams. Uh, and heroes were lucky enough to to bide their time and be that sort of the last party to come in there and, and sandwich the teams on the other side. And yeah, it ended up giving them the best position in the game and the dub. Look, talking about bread, it's like they built the baquette on the south side, and that was all theirs for the taking. So well done by heroes. Also, some good games from what we saw from outside. We outside has been a team that has performed on Storepoint, Legends Gaming as well, getting a bit of that lethality back, especially facing off against both Bearclaw and Serenity from drop that drop-down position. But in the end, they were the ones getting caught yet again near the tail end. So a good game so to start things off here versus A, a versus B. I think, though, we have to talk about this first fight immediately. War on Firebird, this has been their bread and butter, pardon the pun, just fighting here at the edge, finding a team outside the ring, and the first victim, the ailing Dreamfire so far. Which is funny, it's, it's almost a bit ironic there, Dax, because you know, if, you, if you say bread and butter, that used to be Dreamfire's bread and butter, right? They are the team uh, who typically would be um, you know, pitching in around the, the edge of those zone two to zone three circles, looking for a couple of KP, and from there, uh, they launched their assault into finding a, a really good position for the end game. And the fact that we've got uh, other teams being able to catch them off in the same sort of situation now is uh, is a little bit problematic, especially when you think about, uh, you know, the context of how Dreamfire is doing in the split overall, which has been far below their usual stand. Yeah, it just feels like Dreamfire right now, uncomfortable to say the least. But we know a team with that kind of pedigree, they're going to look to bounce back later on. But you can see already our standings here, our, our results from the first map rather. 12 kills for Heroes, 8 kills for Legends Gaming. Boogie Boarders making their way into the top 4 as well. Serenity into the top 6. And I think right now, I have to look at both Keep Going Gaming as well as DNZ in terms of their results. They've made it away from Lightning Rod, at least Genome, but it's only until 8th place for Keep Going Gaming, and it's still a little bit of that awkward rotation and that lower priority coming in from the northeast side of the map that does become a bit of a problem when they take their time having that initial standoff. Yeah, I mean, look, shout out to DNZ for getting uh, elite amount of damage there. We, we respect that. I feel like mm -hmm. if there's, you know, we're giving out bonus points, potentially there should be one for getting leaked damage, but uh, I don't make the rules in ALGS, sadly, so, you know, I've got, uh, yeah. I've got no sway here, but, um, yeah, look, the amount of kills we're getting there, you know, Legends Gaming picking up at 8 and Heroes getting 12 is, uh, is a pretty solid effort. How does that translate into uh, the scoreboard for this series. You can see Heroes well on top there with 24. So fantastic start for them. Um, and Legends Gaming as well, who are doing, you know, they're doing okay this season, but they really do want to um, solidify their position, I think, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because 
I think that's sort of befitting a team of that of their standard. But also, because for a team as good as Legends Gaming are DAX, yep. um, you know, even maybe heir apparent in APAC South, uh, they are actually worried about seeding, right? Like, when yeah. it comes to LAN, uh, the higher you place in your region, the better your seeding is as far as the groups go. So uh, I think Legends Gaming... Uh, are good enough to be worrying about that. They're not worried about like qualifying so much as they're worried about like what position they qualify in. Yeah, I agree with you. And it, it does feel like right now when people were touting that X Blackhand roster to become that heir apparent that you mentioned, there's still no clear number one right now in a backside. But you know who's number one? It's Heroes for the time being. And that was map number one done and dusted. We'll take a break and when we, when we return, we're back to Storm Point. We'll see you guys in a bit more for a backside.
Not all heroes wear capes. Sometimes they bring dome shields to the table. We are back here, ladies and gents, and heroes have taken the first map by storm on Store Point. I'm Daxo here with Genome yet again, and we gotta talk about it still, Genome. 24 points for heroes, 12 from placements, 12 from KP, and a good showing for a team that has just been recently signed. Yeah, very solid from them, and uh, the perfect start to a day and you know honestly you probably want these big days uh these big results earlier in the split rather than later right it kind of gives you options gives you um some room to breathe if you kind of leave it up to the last day and you're the only uh you know your only option is to get a first or something that's a hell of a lot of pressure so i'm um, getting it done at the start certainly better and as you can see we have got uh, Mr. Reliable Easy Flash up there, but he's not at the top because we've only had one game, obviously, and he hasn't had a chance to just edge everyone out over, uh, you know, averaging his ridiculous damage every single game. Um, but yeah, no no surprises there that Kissans and Lahim coming out on top uh, with all three over 2k. Yeah, they're the ones who can really carry that fight for heroes when they went after AGL as well as another squad. But I gotta say, you know, Easy Flash, he's the template by this point, right? It's always, you look at the, the Photoshop and you, you're like in weapon damage.png. And it's Easy Flash there in yeah. the middle. They just move his name from time to time. <laughs> he's, he's always gonna be there and he's been so very consistent. And consistency, so very key for the teams that ha are looking to make head away. Legends Gaming third. Boogie Borders in fourth, Bear Clog Gaming making it to the top five, Serenity for the top six. And as of right now, I, I guess what we've noticed here for A versus B, it's the most zone centric matchup we have in yeah, this split is, so no. far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We've seen, you know, some of the other groups when they match up, you've got a lot of aggro teams. And yeah, you might get, say, 15, 14, 12 teams by that point. But uh, with this group, yeah, 19 teams going into zone four. Uh, that's a that's a pretty incredible effort as far as uh, you know yeah just playing for playing for placement and what uh, and whatnot for these teams so um, yeah I mean like honestly the fact that Easy Flash has stayed this good for this long and you know he's done it on multiple roles as well right like you remember back in the Wolfpack days he was playing on Gibby he was doing a lot of this damage from range. Uh, and now he's on Bangalore and he's leading from the front. And, uh, you know, he's doing a lot of this damage closer up. So uh, it, it frankly just speaks to his quality as a player that he's got all these different bows to his string. And not only that, I think, you know, in the past, maybe there were some times where he'd get caught out. Um, but obviously he's ironed out a lot of that play and he's just so sharp and so reliable now. Um, not only in terms of dealing damage, but just being that spearhead for his team um, and, you know, not... Uh, not creating openings for anyone else. And that's definitely been one of the keys to how Legends has done so well. Yeah, Surfing Flame himself saying that Easy Flash has to be one of the best MNK players, if not the best MNK player in the world so far. It's a, it's a little bit of bias, sure, it's your teammate, but the results speak for themselves. And we've seen really Legends Gaming be that kind of team that exemplifies talent with the MNK setup. I'm also looking at some of the stats in prior days, though. And while we have talked about Wants and Dumpling in the pre show, we're not, they're not here right now. But you know who did incredible damage also in that A versus C matchup for day number two? It was Legacy of Serenity. The duo became a 3-0. Yep. Airports would not stop Legacy anymore. And actually, he did more damage than both Jackie Chan and Gugu on average. So one wow. thing I've really watched out for Serenity is just how they're able to pick up KP, like single KP, double KPs out of nowhere, just from the way that they play and how patient that they are. Yeah, I mean... They've also been uh, a, like a, a massive improvement in their gameplay. Um, looks like we're just waiting for a, a lobby restart here. Uh, hopefully that won't be too long. Uh, let's just have a, have a quick look at this video in the meantime. Look, I mean, this is what this has been the most competitive year of Apex. Who is going to be the team to challenge the titans of TSM? From legacy to a dynasty, it is now complete for TSM. TSM up in the skies, house goes down for the heavens!
we're starting to see a bit of a rivalry develop in Apex oh, Legends. Boy, oh, boy. As these trophies just keep going back and forth, Dark Zero, TSM, it's always one of those two teams. Unbelievable final we've had here today. Four by four and eliminating TSM as a first team to go in the lobby four. fear anything. Can you say the same? Sure, history stands with TSM and Dark Zero, but maybe in the future it will go back to Apex out. Hey, Dark Zero was ours, guys. Don't forget, they just moved to NA for a different level of competition. And speaking of now, it's time for us to get very, very soon back into Storm Point. Uh, I can't wait to see if we're gonna get even more of those distinct legend picks. It was really just heroes, the only ones playing Gibraltar there, genome. But beyond that, it's still your usual fanfare, Bangalore's, Watsons, a few conduits here and there, a few cat as well but it really has been more of these some of these comfort picks right now are some of these experimental picks that these teams are willing to bring out yeah there's, there's even a couple of recon characters in there as right uh, as well right so we've got you know belkin uh playing his classic bloodhound godhand also picking up um the bloodhound and then you've got lightning unicorn uh playing the crypto as well so definitely yeah a couple of fun picks and um you know obviously they're doing just as well as the others with gibby taking out game number one yeah, and just as well, right, as we are getting into the game, game number two, back to Storm Point we go. Here we go yet again, as we are getting these streams dropping out of the dropship. Northwest and Southeast, our flight path for now. The teams should be able to get to their POIs as per usual. Welcome, welcome back, though. Game number two between A and B. That's the genome still, and... I, I'm looking right now again at the agent comps, or rather the legend picks that we have here so far. And I, I think one thing I've noticed interesting enough is we have even less conduits than perhaps usual. I think we only have five conduits right now compared to all of the other regions that we've seen so far in ALGS. Yeah, look interesting. Uh, maybe it's losing a little bit of ground, a little bit of uh, you know popularity as the split goes on. We've certainly seen that in the past with uh, some legends that were sort of uh, you know like people when they were theory crafting, they were like, oh yeah, this is really really strong, and then it sort of plays out, and you're like, oh okay, maybe this doesn't work quite as well as we thought it did. Um, just to update you guys on this little contest going on down here, it's. A bit of a switcheroony. So last time it was D and Z sort of fine. taking the middle building and then going down to Thunderwatch uh, with KPG on the high ground. Uh, the jump mastering has changed it up this time as we see the revs up rampage. Uh, I mean, you got to be careful. You got to remember that can blow straight through the doors. Uh, and KPG have uh, already made their way down to Thunderwatch. Yeah, they've really amplified the potential damage here from DNZ, and they're rushing down now towards Keep Going, who has to evacuate towards Thunderwatch, as you mentioned. KPG, though, they do have blue armors to work with. KH, oh, wow. just stopping up for the time being. And they're one of the teams with the conduit here, so ready for active combat, if ever. Yeah, and they're, like, they're taking it right to them this time. Or at least Joker was actually looking for an opening. Now he's going back to his team. Um, so it seemed there for a second that DNZ were actually going to force the issue, but no, we might just get another one of those sort of, uh, you know, split and make their way towards uh, end game. Which, look, uh, would make a little bit of sense, because if either of them actually had time to scan the ring, they might see that it's not all that far from them. And it's probably going to end up somewhere in the vicinity of Stormcatcher. Yeah, it's looking likely and no credits already on it. We also saw the legend picks from above and Conduit actually taking a spot ahead of Watson. So 
I, I guess it's something Apex out has been trying to theorica for the past few weeks, right? Is that shield economy, how do they want it a little bit more instant with the rage and transfer? Like all the other regions have that Watson pilot and also the suede grenades along the way. And it does feel like there is a little bit more of activity right now with the conduit. I wonder what means, especially for such a zone centric matchup. So Seek Serenity right now, they have their own fight versus Legends Gaming here by the grab oh, no. cannon. And they're trying to get the hell out. Well, keep going on the other hand, they're flying too towards the north side. I didn't quite catch it. Do they flat the gravity cannon? Is that how that works? Either way, KH just tried to take it back across and grab, uh, you know, either potentially the other two men or maybe just the death box, but he paid for it. And all of a sudden, we get a complete trade between the two teams here. Now it's a 1v1. Yeah, 1v1 and Joker here looking to mow down anyone in front of him. It was Keep Going Gaming getting that initial knock, trying to take advantage of the situation. But D and Z, they make them work for it. Bible going for the res. Joker still here by the doorway. Looking to bait things out if ever. Joker waiting for his proper timing. And here he comes. A rampage at the ready. He does have a thermite to try and amplify the damage. The flatline also. Look at the whole close approach from Keep Going Gaming. Bible gets purple armor now. The advantage is clear here for Keep Going Gaming. And they finally win the contest that has been boiling for so long. Oh, that must be such a relief. Uh, they've got crafting to, to help them out after they get this as well. And, you know, unlike DNZ, none of them boxed. So it's going to be a much quicker uh, you know, reset here to get up and going. Um, to, as we said, they've actually got fairly good priority if they play from Thunderwatch and then make their way down that hill. Yeah, we've seen Keep Going Gaming do well with high priority in these kind of games. They won their first outing back then last week towards the Eastern Trail since they did start from Lightning Rod, as we mentioned. We're seeing Heroes, though, setting up with the Watson. And if you notice now, Heroes, no more Gibraltar. They're gonna go for the Horizon instead, and I, I kind of have to wonder... Did they choose the Gibraltar on purpose last time around? It's still one with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, surely if you win a game with it, though, you're like, hey, this, this is real. We have to keep playing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they did it, okay? Uh, I've seen wacky things in ALGS, and that has to be one of them. Or, eye, though, SWQ? Mm -hmm. Or are they playing like the roulette version where it's like, okay, we won with this comp. Now oh. we switch it over. And, like, once we win a game with the next comp, like, you know, we keep, we keep rolling it around. Yeah, that's, that's, that's prime content, and if anyone dares do that <laughs> in ALGS, I will just respect them. But we're seeing the ring already. You got outside, Legends Gaming, Serenity, Heroes, all within the same vicinity. No credit on the other hand. They're the ones in control of Stormcatcher with Akuma and Team Burger getting a few buildings nearby. But what if, you know, what if, what if? We get one of those wild ring pulls yet again, and a team like White Flash can take advantage. It's highly unlikely, but we've seen crazy things before happen in ALGS. Well, actually, looking at Kill Devil, who are over on the eastern side there, they're sort of sitting in, you know, what we're going to call the, uh, you know, the DZ land spot where they won land from. And, you know, Kill Devil, I think they're sitting at zero split points so far overall. So these guys are really struggling. Uh, and, a, you know, a win from, if that does happen to be Godspot out there, you can see at the top of your screen, I would go a long way to, to getting them back on, well, not back, but on the board uh, as far as the split goes. Yeah, they're one of those preseason qualifier teams trying to find an impact into the lobby. Outside, though, busy with the spiders, exterminating, getting a little bit of loot and making sure that they can build up for a potential EVO later on. Also late on the rotation now, you got Bearclaw Gaming heading their way. Dreamfire still way out in the edge. And speaking of, we're seeing them fly by here right now. They realize that Bearclaw Gaming is nearby. They decide to move oh, towards the Eastern Trail instead. But this is a problem because Dreamfire, they're avoiding a single squad, yes, but they're going to be running into Kill Devil eventually. They will get up there. Are they going to be able to take that spot for themselves? That would be certainly a reversal of fortunes compared to game number one. At least this time when they make it out of the ring, you can see they're going to have to pop their last med kits to, uh, to heal themselves back up to full and take the next fight. But at the very least, they are going to be able to take uh, their next battle without that ring ticking away at them. Yeah, Team Burger spotting out White Flash, playing into the command center. 
overlooked entertainment in the same tunnels as well and speaking of keep going gaming from a while ago they have taken thunder to watch as you mentioned so they're safe for the time being i guess right now the cause of concern has to be the late rotations from the south side still lightning unicorn on one hand boogie borders on the other and white flash they find that contact overlook entertainment just right underneath them by this point and white flash is just looking for anyone who dares use the rope here yeah, well they, they can probably hear Overlooked Entertainment over underneath them. Um, as you say, it's a, a very risky play to <laughs> to be going for that zip line. They are pretty much a death sentence if there's anyone waiting at the top of them. Uh, the ring has actually shifted north, so Cool Devil perhaps fighting one here they fought. That said, they are coming off the back of this fight that we're seeing right now, which is between Bear Claw and Dream Fire. The popping piece of the hunt, and he's looking for anyone else to pick the mice. Falcon with a second. The creeping barrage does the damage, sure, but Bear Claw Gaming it leads now to a one v one. Rudney sticking around though in cover. Dreamfire. They don't want to get eliminated too early on this time around, and they take the fight to Bear Claw Gaming. But wait, there's more. Kill Devil watching from the overlook. We got Luo Han keeping Fiti here into cover, and Dreamfire. Wow. They win the battle, yes, but. You know it has to hurt still for Dreamfire. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're trying to recover both of the banners here. We can see that happening also, but uh, Pete is going to have to go well into the zone to try and make this one happen um, and kill them all. Yeah, like, I can, I'm starting to wonder if, uh, you know, that's some of their problems. You can see them being a little too hesitant there and not really pushing the issue, and they easily could have grabbed a couple of those KP for themselves. Sometimes a little bit of experience with more Monster Firebird. They have gotten the experience through the fires and flames of this lobby alone. They're dealing now with Boogie Borders. LK getting the reset going. So War Monster Firebird, they get a bit of space to work with. But nearby watching them is Lightning Unicorn, who has trailblazed their way through this fight. So Lightning Unicorn avoiding the clash for the time being. Boogie Borders, though, they did some good damage. They're still kept at bay by WMFB. To add another one of those sculpts to their name with uh, the evac tower going out in front of them. Can Boogie Borders get onto that or will War Monster Firebird uh, perhaps get a 3 2 1 and take them off it? So you can see they're really looking for that, but no Boogie Borders oh. have, have gone all the way out and you've got AGL here. Also, in trouble as they, they run across Pete. It just goes all the way wrong for Dreamfire, and there's no escaping Pete, though, doing some good damage. XX and Jackie might get down by the ring. Exactly, that's what happens. Pete gets cut. That's credit for those two. The Kill Devil puts this. No, they're still <laughs> sticking around there. So, AGL, they're gonna get the reset, but we're watching still. War Monster Firebird keeping Boogie Borders in check. Yeah, XX doesn't pop his syringe fast enough either. Uh, and the spiders are being just as much of a problem as anything else down there outside in the ring. Um, uh, almost Firebird, as you said, still keeping a, a close eye onto Boogie Borders all the way out there. And then we've got, uh, Keep Going Gaming. And, uh, they are very much in God's ball as the ring continues to pull, uh, up onto the hill underneath Thunderwatch. Uh, and of course that's, you know, where they end up and they've just had to slowly mosey on down. Uh, and find their way to a fantastic spot as they'll us or look down upon all of the rest of the lobby who are just clustered into Stormcatcher. Yeah, you may say Fratituous, you may say Deserve, win that contest, and now you win God spot because of it. AGL, on the other hand, quick little update about them. They should be able to get out with a 3-0 still. Keeping an eye out though, Team Burger seeing the movement already. White Flash flying by, looking to move That's into the spot. mountains now. And they're just going to be a cross keep gaming. They've spotted out each other for the time being. Got Pricey also watching from afar with a bow check. But we're going to see teams like White Flash who love to play zone get to priority. Beautiful bow and arrow shots from Pricey to get a little bit of damage done from afar. Another one there. But yeah, it's just all about pokes and prods as we will see these teams try to go for the mountain hike later on. Yeah, so AGL just got out of the spiders. They actually took quite a bit of damage from Kill Devil as they were on their way out. Um, so they've only just sort of, they're limping towards zone now, but as you can see, they're probably going to run into Boogie Borders very soon. And I dare say one, if not both of those teams uh, are going to go down because they're, you know, they're getting funneled into that choke point near the gravity cannon as they go up towards Stormcatcher. 
Gino. I thought this was six maps, not the best of three, because here we go again with round number two between War Monster Firebird and Boogie Borders. WMFP still saying to Boogie Borders, no, 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 no crossing this way. Raki has had enough though inside the smokes. He will go for the fight, tries to try and hit the melee, but Azu hits a beautiful 30 30 shot. Busty though getting up to the plate. Here comes Tan as well, and Boogie Borders going for the overrun. War Monster Hi. Firebird gonna get eliminated, but there is still AGL nearby. Jackie oh. here from above flying now to try and get into a position beyond the gravity cannon. So Boogie Borders, they get the reprieve because instead of them, it's Hero is gonna be the contact point of AGL. AGL still is playing this escape route. Can Jackie get away in time? Can XX as well? It seems like they have gotten to the high ground, but there's still no credit in outside nearby. Watching out for Boogie Borders though. Fussy, so low. He's in danger. Heroes has taken advantage of the situation and are coming up with a little bit of KP along the way because of it. I mean, it seems incredible the Boogie Borders got out of that at all. Like, you know, AGL had got full three years third party to come up behind, but they, you know, prioritized themselves and their rotation and went to the evac tower instead. So, honestly, I feel like Boogie Borders have survived longer than they should have. Um, AGL, on the other hand, have, uh, you know, I think made the right decision because they are within Stormcatcher right now as a full three, um, and that has worked out so well for them as we start to see teams realize that it's going to be going further up the hill and they have to start worrying about the very incomplete cover that you get when you go towards the top of Stormcatcher. It's a very hard zone to play this one. It's time to move and Team Burger now moving away from all of the suppression courtesy of Entertainment. Gotta say though, Legends Gaming taking a solid third party there towards no credit. A little bit of revenge from week number one when, they dro when no credit dropped on them back in World's Edge. But we're still keeping an eye out here for Pricey to hit the shots from afar from Bocek. Overlook Entertainment, they just need a little bit of space to work with. Move over towards the north side of the map because these teams now know you have to head there. SWQ doing just that. Outside trying to do so as well. AGL2, but Legends Gaming is the one in control of store capture for the time being. Oh man, this is going to be a fun end to this. Legends Gaming, as you said. They've got, uh, along with quite a few other teams like us. AGL, they take it. the yep. main building here from Stormcatcher, and they have to try and work their way up somehow. I think a lot of teams, honestly, this is going to be like the Valk days, they're actually going to have a lot of teams throwing a Hail Mary evac to try and find a spot on this hill. Alright, let's go fly high and see where the clouds do end. Sharky though finding BC, the ring doing the damage there, and Team Burger just consuming who they can as they move northwards. Boogie Borders now gonna get eliminated. Kill Devil, same kind of danger. Serenity and Team Burger clash on the other side. The Kill Devil versus outside. It's only Luo Han trying to survive here. And teammates gone. Staying into the corner to survive for the time being. Outside though, getting shot from the back as well as Team Burger now getting eliminated by White Flash from above. And speaking of White Flash, a team that has tried to make headways into this lobby. A team that loves to play the zone and get into position. Now they're rewarded for it. They do love to be there. They don't like being in the thick of things. So, uh, you know, at range with their 30-30s and a triple take is exactly the same situation they want to be in, unlike Legends Gaming, who are obviously not very happy uh, as they're a scaric away from being removed from this game here in 6th spot. Uh, it's going to be AGL that actually goes down first here, but surely SWQ, who are just underneath Legends, are going to be able to finish off Easy Flash sooner or later. Yeah, they spot him. They shatter those shields. Player K, though, the one who takes the brunt of the damage. But SWQ, they should know it's only one target in front of them. Fences also on the horizon. He got outside there. But then that mini compound, White Flash, still trying to take pot shots from afar. And while this all happens, Keep Going is having the time of their life. It's just like White Flash and Keep Going have a sort of agreement. You guys shoot from that side, we shoot from here. And those 3030s are keeping outside and the rest oppressed. Oh man, you can see Easy Flash there. I don't think he even has a bat left in his inventory. I don't think he has a single shield cell. He is... Uh, yeah, completely pubo mode right now, basically. So he's just going to have to try and creep his way in. He's already managed to get top five, which, you know, at least that's a couple of placement points there for the team. But gosh, if he any get, gets any first, that would be a good effort here. Keep going gaming. They have, as we said, just had a tiny, 
Uh, you know, short little walk down from Thunderwatch, which has made this the easiest game to play out so far. But this is where it matters. This is where they show their worth as a team. Can they convert this into a win uh, from what has been uh, a spot that got given to them? Yeah, SWQ is trying to make a case for it by finding easy class first and foremost. They're moving now to try and get past outside, but Noel Sang makes them work for it. Noel Sang with the damage, Soyo as well doing well from afar, and White Flash pitching in to eliminate SWQ. Three squads now remaining. It's bearing down on outside that pressure. White Flash here onto the left side, and still KPG God Spot is true. They have all the highest elevation. The Dark Veil though isolates this fight into a 3v3 and white flash is on it now they're the aggressors now they want to go for it they down two already looking for a third as soon as they can well armor swaps as well but keep going they're moving forward at the same time outside is gone but keep going gaming they were the alpha they are looking to be the omega the beginning fight one the ending fight one and keep going gaming takes this map I mean, the even funnier thing to think about in that game, Dax, is the fact that they had to win the contest there at the start. you got to wonder, I mean, if you're D and Z, how much would you be kicking yourself that the one game you lose the contest is the game that you automatically get God Spot for? I mean, that's so many points that have gone begging there for that team just because they happened to lose that 50-50 this time. Yeah, you, you just gotta say it, man. You win the contest, you win the game. As soon as that first squad is eliminated. Okay, that's the show, folks. Wrap it up. We're gonna put Keep Going Gaming at the very top. And we just saw them play that so very patiently. They waited for White Flash to go for the aggression. And it was really smart for White Flash to go for the Dark Veil. I was very impressed with their playmaking so far. But this was the fight that sealed the deal for Keep Going Gaming. Bible there getting some good damage done. Also evolving his shield at the right time was so critical. Having this extra bit of tankiness to fight back to move forward like that. And some raw shots with the Rampage to beat Joker at his own game. It gave KPG the back vantage point for a long, long time in that match. I mean, they really bided their time, um, and in the end, they, they rock up with about 10 kills. So it's uh, a classic situation of, you know, they don't overextend when they know they have God Spot, um, and they let those easy kills at the end come to them. I mean, you can see this, like, I don't know if I've ever seen more of like a fish in a barrel situation in Apex, where they're literally shoved into the one tiny part behind the wall there. Um, just made the shots. Uh, you know, you could have closed your eyes and played it out from there, essentially, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you didn't even. Uh, you don't need digi threats to see those guys. That's a that's a pretty easy couple of kills there for Lamb Bible and KH there, who pick up 10 KP um, with over 3k damage. But you can see the damage spread across those cop, uh, the the top five teams actually yeah. fairly even. Um, but you know, the the KP certainly uh, lending itself towards those first couple. Yeah, and outside getting consistency into the top three, that they go with six kills. Big props also to White Flash, formerly known as Ash Esports. They also have a new player in the roster right now in Prota. And you can see he's made an impact already. Five kills to his name, doing some great work with the Catalyst and propelling White Flash into a good position. And that call to go early on to the other side from where Keep Going Gaming was, sealed the deal for White Flash to make it into the top three. Down the list, you got AGL getting four kills, Overlook there in eight, getting three. Team Burger, Heroes, Boogie Birders couldn't make it to the top 10. Same could be said by Lightning Unicorn. And still, unfortunately for Dreamfire, you got Peter and Roy getting some knocks, yes, getting some kills, but it's still 17th place. And we're looking for that moment from Dreamfire where they're gonna start popping off. Yeah, exactly, right? I mean, 3k P there for the guys, sure. Uh, that'll keep them tipping, uh, ticking along, as you say, Dax, but. Uh, they need more. Uh, they need. Uh, they need a lot more going throughout the rest of the season, considering um, the shocking start they've had. So, you can see, uh, yeah, still down there in 17th. Team Burger alongside them. So a couple of uh, names that I mean, we. I don't know how long we can keep, keep saying unexpected for Dax <laughs> if it happens week after week, I suppose. But I mean, you know, Lightning Unicorn, they're sitting, what, like third on the overall leaderboard at the moment. So they're still waiting to, to have their pop off moment. But yeah, look, outside KPG and uh, Heroes all sitting up the top there. Uh, a couple of 
uh, yeah, really, uh, really good starts to the day. Yeah, and White Flash propelling themselves into the top five, as I said a while ago, outside there with their top three placing. They tie it up with heroes. So well done for some of, I'd say, the underdogs coming into a lobby. This staff with legends, with boogie boarders, and all the like. And it really goes to show. I, there's no clear number one yet in Apex no. out, and all these teams are just working for it. So game number two, that's done. We got to ha one more map for Storm Points upon us, and we will see you guys in a bit after this break for more of Apex out. and loaded. Drop shocked and rocked. Say hello to the 4-0 first.
Get ready for a world of hurt. Kill confirmed. Gonna add you to the list. If that isn't a PSA of the winning your contest, I don't know what is right. Welcome back, guys. As Keep Going Gaming has gotten a second store point win overall for them and their first one for today. I'm Dax here with Genome yet again. And just in that last game, this is why we always talk about A versus B being that zone centric matchup. You can see how important getting God Spot is in this lobby. Yeah, incredibly important, and uh, yeah, honestly, a, a pretty easy win there in the end from KPG. Like, also want to give a shout out to White Flash, who I think, as you mentioned, uh, yeah, they've changed one of their players over, bringing in Prota from uh, Taiwan, by the looks of it, uh, into their roster, and it, that may have even, you know, really changed their fortunes or how they play as a team, because... Um, as we mentioned before, you know, they were quite good. Their macros seem to be really on point, finding their way into spots uh, very early on in the game. But, like, literally as soon as another team looked at them, they would crumble like a house of cards. And now uh, we're seeing them come out with, uh, you know, how many, how many kills was that in the last game? They've got 11 kills for the day so far. And, I mean, I'd have to go back and look at the stats, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's more kills than they have uh, for the rest of ALGS so far. Um, like every other every other series they played, frankly, because uh, yeah, that's a it's been a big difference. So you know maybe that is Proton, maybe uh, you know that's making all the difference in terms of their team fighting and just unleashing some of that aggression in them. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, let's listen to a few player comps here and there. I think though, outside, you know, top three, top two, well done by them too. Mm, yeah, mm. for sure. So. Um, yeah, I'm sure we're getting into uh, game three of Storm Point uh, pretty shortly. Um, as we said, some fun picks coming out. Um, the question is, do we see Gibraltar again from Heroes? Now that they've seen it's clearly better than the option. No, apparently they're still going back to Watson Bangalore Horizon from what I can see. Uh, a little bit sad uh, there. I've got, got some love for the big man in my heart. I'm sure everyone who, <laughs> who uh, was around during the, that time where, you know, we had the, the Gibraltar Caustic meta... Uh, I think, uh, you know, holds a special place in their heart. Even if he was like 100% pick rate at one point, and honestly, a bit too strong, uh, I don't mind seeing some flashes of him every now and then. Yeah, well, it's time for us to see the game afoot. It's time to go back into Storm Point. Welcome back as we go again. Last time we're gonna see Storm Point in the A versus B matchup. And we've already gotten two unique winners so far. A while ago it was Keep Going Gaming. First things first though, it was the newly signed team of heroes. Who else will take that top spot? Well, it always begins with the contest here towards Northeast DNC versus Keep Going Gaming. We go again. I was actually just uh as we watch these guys get in, I was watching uh, down on the south side, Boogie Borders and Lightning Unicorn were, were playing some footsies uh, in, with their flight pass, I think, fighting over the X Armory in between Devastated Coast and Echo HQ. But uh, yeah, once again, uh, it's between these two. And as we've seen, ooh, nice purple pickup would be very good there for Keep Going Gaming. Because uh, DNZ, they're scoring triple whites at the moment. This time, DNZ do get the upper hand or do get the, uh, the high ground at the very least. That said, uh, you know, with those triple whites, they actually get some hits onto the purple Dax, so they are aware that the other team does have a purple armor in front of them, so that might give them some pause in terms of pushing this, because, I mean, that's already, what, an extra, uh, you know, 50 uh, HP that they have to deal with, a disadvantage uh, that the other team has on them. Yeah, you just don't mess with that, basically, right? And DNZ, they're still keeping an eye out. Move over to the Eastern Compound as Thunderwatch will go in favor of Keep Going Gaming instead. We've seen this before, though. It doesn't mean the contest is over. Both of these teams just split looting right now and looking to fight later on if they find the opportunity. I mean, last time they had to wait a bit, right? Like, it, it wasn't yep. that the fight didn't happen straight away. It was, uh... I'm not sure if it was the, the grab cannon rat or if they just sort of ended up next to each other on that right side. Um, as you can see, they're pretty split at the moment. Um, that said, it is a fairly, uh, you know, central, I guess, maybe sort of northern circle. 
Um, as you can see, there's our lovely map is uh, is bugging out on us again. <laughs> um, but you can see it'll probably end up. Uh, ooh, what's this? Maybe maybe like a waterfall circle um, potentially. Um, we no credit are gonna try and set up in a moment, but uh, you know we've got bear claw. Um, also looking at the one of the uh, the ski lift houses, and then you've got uh, Akuma also rotating in pretty fast um, up into that same sort of area. They might actually catch off no credit below them. Yeah, they were having the same idea, and Surely? now they're stopping. No, they're no gonna credit. let them go. Ooh. They're gonna go cascade, and Akuma, they're just so silent, quietly. They hunt down no credit. They're hounding them. Eventually, shots do a ring, and no credit finds contact, but I don't think it's really towards Akuma themselves. There's Legends Gaming, there's Dreamfire, the Serenity, Cascade Falls has already been evacuated by Bearclaw Gaming who takes the ski oh, lift, yes, no. and Dreamfire is the first to fall immediately. Unreal. Uh, more placement points, going begging, more everything, frankly. Oh, wow, it's uh... Candles out there, honestly, for our uh, our Dreamfire friends and uh, all the supporters, because we know they've got a lot. Uh, they've, they've rightly won a lot over the years with their incredible performances, uh, both in Apex South and at LAN. We just have not seen a single um, you know representation of that so far in Split One. Yeah, we haven't seen that Dreamfire magic, and ironically enough, we were talking about it in between these maps, you know, in, during that break, when will Dreamfire show up? Unfortunately for them, it's not going to be on Stormpoint whatsoever. Oh. But Legends, they already drop with one as KD takes the fight to them. Easy flash trading evenly. And Legends Gaming, they're looking to overrun Kill Devil here. But Levy makes it work for it. Legends Gaming down to only player K left. He's usually the support now. He's going to need to carry the banners of Legends Gaming on his back as KD, they have the rooftop here. Uh, he's looking to try and get a res underneath here. He's going to go for it on Easy Flash. Will he get that one off? To shake up what happens downstairs. Looks like they're going to have to play for inside the building now um, with KD. Still level getting the top of that. As you can see, they're taking the second floor. They did manage to get Easy Flash back into it. So that's some solace for them. But damn, I mean... Whenever I see that happen, though, because obviously, you know, most teams, honestly, would be running maybe two 30-30s at the start of the game, Dax. And, like, you know, they, they, they spray with your, with whatever SMG, AR they're running, and then they inevitably bling out the 30-30. And I just, I'm almost, like, seeing, like, the lottery balls, like, running around in my head as they do it, right? Because since they nerfed the hipfire for 30-30, it just seems so RNG-based. Who yep. wins that when you've just got, uh, you know... Players running around each other, jumping around, taking jump shots with a 30-30. I mean, it must be so inaccurate oh, at that yeah. point. Um, and it's just, it's just, <laughs> honestly, I find Look, it quite hilarious that that decides fights sometimes. It's a hope and a prayer, yes. But if you hit a 30-30 shot like that with the lesser armor, sometimes these teams would have by this point in the game, then a nutty shot will give you the advantage. And that is how God Hand takes it. Very impressive fight from God Hand. Hope to see more from them just like that. But Lightning Unicorn, a team that has loved to play the Valkyrie ever since day one. They utilize it to move into the house already. Jack cute, Gop Gaps. In position now to set up the pylon, set up the fences, and light the unicorn back to their old ways. Yeah, I mean, like talking about old ways, DNZ and KPG both uh, just crafting up a storm at Zeus and Lightning Rod um, out in the storm. Looking at the other teams from around here, ATL also very far out of the action. Everyone else is uh, pretty much clustered in the about now. Obviously, Dream 5 being the one team that's taken out. Uh, and then the rest of the teams, yeah, really just looking for their spots. Yeah, this is where teams like Bear Claw Gaming are banking on that ring pull towards the north side to the ski lift. That can be caused for consideration. Akuma, Team Burger also looking for the same kind of case. And immediately now, Cascade Falls still in for the time being, but it shifts more towards the waterfall that you mentioned a while ago here, Genome. Yes, uh, it could be that it might even, it may even pull up a little bit further potentially and you know team burger could get their first choice of luck to help them do this as we actually are seeing white flash get caught off here by boogie borders oh and it's just fussy and racky on the on the front side here 
And Lahim also pitching in from Heroes. And they work together to eliminate White Flash there. That's the cause of concern for White Flash. They're good when they're in the zone. It's a struggle when they're still found on the edge. Boogie Borders will retreat though. Doesn't want to fight. Heroes at this point in time can't even go into Cascade Falls because of all that occupation of those houses. Keep an eye out the Bear Claw. This is a team that works really well with these middle-centric rings. That was that first game back in the first ever outing of A versus B that they won just because they were nearby that within near that house near Cascade Falls, right? So Bear Claw Gaming, they're very attuned for this kind of setup. Yep, and as you can see, if they can keep control of those buildings, um, now PCG are not running a catalyst. They do have the Watson, so I'm um, sure that'll help them sit up there uh and then you can see team Berg as as we noted if they can stay on top of that hill those doors that open out from command center could actually be a very strong position to play um if the ring does continue to pull in that direction if it does pull however as we were predicting uh, at the start maybe over to the waterfall then you've got to look at teams like swq who can play from that uh the scan beacon uh the, the player scan beacon there on top of the waterfall where you get some some pretty good positioning so yeah look a couple of options depending all those teams that found uh the buildings within cascade falls um pretty safe for now and then um you know the other teams like boogie boarders who really love uh to just hunt people down and they, i can tell you they've been doing it very successfully in scrims all weekends uh <laughs> all week long dax but as we can see this is not playing out anything even remotely like that with teams being so conservative in this avb matchup that uh you know boogie borders uh who knows like will they go hungry is the, is the question um that i i have in mind for them yeah scrim box not the best conversion rate when you get into a box out algs on the other hand though serenity a team to watch out for and legacy the MK player on this roster, he already snipes down one of the hero side. And that's where Legacy gets all these KP for Serenity. That's how he has that big average damage that can match once on Dumpling. His skill with the 30-30 and these single shots from afar, it's precision to get some of kind of these kills. God Hand though, on the other hand, keeping an eye on them as well. It will be a squad baron down. It's AGL eliminating them immediately. And AGL, they're ready to hunt down anyone else. Yeah, Blood Bank, Catalyst, interesting composition from God Hand. I feel like it's been playing massive dividends so far. And this is another example of it with the AGL. I mean, it's not all there. A little bit of help from the comes out of Fairfield Gaming as well. Of the Bloodhound, got Belkin popping the Beast of the Hunt, can see through the smokes, does some good damage, and this does keep AGL at bay. But AGL has red armor, they can go for the fight if they choose to towards Bear Claw and Akuma. And on the other hand, we're seeing that ring, and it is still towards that waterfall. And many of these teams will want to push their way through. DNC on one hand, though, moving towards Team Burger and finally climbing down the mountain to move the command center. Team Burger, the gate keeps still. Pop up pushes forward, big heavy set for Joker. Pricey already down, and these doorways that Team Burger have been backing on. It's not gonna save the first one. Team Burger in trouble, cause keep going gaming. So both sides from Lightning Rod will sandwich here. The Team Burger squad, they have become the patty in this situation, and keep going gaming, waiting outside the door, looking for their bitter rival yet again. Yeah, Burger, I mean, they were, they felt like they were trying to play the long game there, and, you know, you don't always have that kind of time. In Apex, there's always someone waiting, always someone listening, and someone ready to pounce this time. It's Keep Going Gaming, who come in on the back end and leave only way alive. So the woes continue for Team Burger. I can tell you that they weren't going to get the next ring, so uh, it's not like they lost God Spot, but they have really lost out on their chance to make a big impact here in Game 3. Yeah, it's a hard finger for Team Burr. They had to catch up the mustard, the patty, the lettuce, but they were just basically sandwiched between the bread that is Keep Going and DNC. And it's still a pleasure between Keep Going and DNC to watch out for them. Keep Going's gatekeeping DNC right now. Bear Claw, on the other hand, though, still holding their claim towards the ski lift here, but AGL. They have that armor advantage, they have that confidence, and if you know Jackie finds the opening, he's gonna go for it. Hustle spotted. Every chance that they can make inroads here against Bear Claw. 
They also have options to play on the north well, side of the hill. Uh, the, the zone well, is actually close. pulling back into Cascade Falls. In, not even so much the waterfall, Dax, but actually more into the buildings itself. Um, so teams like uh, Lightning Unicorn, like No Credit, and Outside are actually in perfect um, situations. They're just like AGL are in perfect unison coming off their three jump towers. Yeah, they're flying by, heckling some damage, and while this happens, AGL have navigated War Monster Firebird, finding the only empty house into the next ring, and they're gonna be in a good position moving forward. We're still watching AGL having to do a lot of work moving forward. Bear Claw Gaming, though, hounding them as per usual, and Belkin wants to lead that charge. One of our signature Bloodhound players right now, Lightning Unicorn. They have their own scuffle, and it's with Serenity. They're only down to two, though, versus three on the other side. Beautiful Arcstar, though, to keep them at bay for the time being, courtesy of Lalabang. And the Chibagricade, so they need to stop any kind of ambition for Lightning Unicorn. Right now, they have the house, but for how long? Yeah, Grenade's not doing double damage to the Shield Jammers like they might do to, say, you know, the Cat Q. Oh, wow, well, the Gravity Lift comes up here, and DNZ are gonna go down at the hands of Ossi, who's got that wingman, and he is ready to wreak havoc with that care package weapon. I mean, sitting there on the blue shield, I very much doubt he'll be on that for long uh, with the mini Kraber in his hands. Yeah, we're not done with this fight, though. SWQ, they're throwing out the Dark Boy, the pool for a small opening to go for the Resurrection onto Yu Ling. So, revived in the cards. Boogie Borders, though, trying to find their way in. And here comes Boogie Borders. Mana is able to smack down everyone and anyone in front of him. Fussy doing well with the Wingman and the Boogie Borders. Ooh. They do get the kill lead for the time being. Legends Gaming wants to go for this as we're watching WFFP right now versus Overlooked as well. Yeah, I mean, Legends, they were going straight past the Kaku's Easy Flash actually goes down um, as they try and start that fight, though. Uh, and here we go. You can see them getting into it now, but they're going up against the Prowler. We've seen how incredibly dangerous Panic can be. You put a Prowler with a controller. It is one hell of a combination. And sure, they lose Fossey, but if they can find a Respawn Beacon or a Moby somewhere, uh, you know, they will be uh, a full three coming back into this. But God, that was an amazing job from Boogie Borders to even repel that push. They were in shambles. Uh, you know, Legends Gaming had every chance to come out on top there. Um, they had the drop on Boogie Borders, but pure raw skill comes through for Boogie Borders to take that one out. Big ups there Absolutely. to Racky and Panny. Uh, a declaration from the top of the mountain genome. Who dares challenge Boogie Borders? Look to make their way down into Cascade Falls. In the other hand though, it's AGL. Just hell it from afar, kill devil, flash inside the Cascade Falls compound, and they're moving forward to Light the Unicorn nearby. Hero is gonna be the same kind of case, and Kill Devil wants to take the spot away from Light the Unicorn, who have defenses at the ready. So KD here for now. Looking for any kind of opening. He knew to move forward though. Stay into the ground floor and stay in cover for now. As Akuma is also gonna get eliminated here. Yeah, I dare say a couple of teams are about to meet that same fate. You can see Wei finally going down, and that's Burger out in 12. Um, whoa, Panak, kill leader at the moment with seven kills for himself. Incredible effort from uh, that duo left alive. Let's see how well they do for the rest of this game. Might have had, uh, might have done the job already, honestly, with the amount of KP they picked up. Boogie Borders, so they're holding hands together as Keep Going Gaming is above them. We're keeping an eye out though for no credit. They've had this compound for so very long. This is where they're comfortable whenever yeah. they have that Watson set up courtesy of Savior. I mean, look how close they are to that end zone. It's uh, it's going to be just to the left of no credit and just in front of the building. Um, <laughs> that's uh, Warmless the Firebird and Serenity are holding currently. Uh, of course, yep, Keep Going Gaming on the waterfall will have great sightlines to probably pick up a couple of kills but they've only got 20 seconds more before they have to start moving down as well and dealing with the likes of AGL um, that also are going to have to give up their nice uh, rock there okay we've got two members of the boogie boarders left alive let's see how they navigate this as a duo up there yeah I think we do that I'm not going to have all unless you have an alt so no might have left I don't hit anyone above us, I think, so they went to the right. They went to the right, yep, move up. 
Let's Slowly smack the, the door, bro. Yeah, smack the door. Just... Yeah. Maybe rip a bang out, right? We're smacking it. Bound it forward. Bang out the forward. Come, come, come. Just zip bounce this, okay? Now fucking double star. I'm good. So good, so good. Yes, kill the fucking. Get the okay, okay, okay. Bet, 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 bet. Got away. Get a goo down. Get goo down. Nice. Have a fucking game here, boys. They're burning us, burning us. Bad birds. My side, my I side. I got stuck, oh, Hans. Don't. Climbing. Just drop, 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 drop. Peace. The numbers. The numbers too much to handle for Boogie Boarders and no credit. Give them all the credit as they stake their claim and hold off anyone coming their way. The final ring are found us and we still have nine squads left. War Monster, Firebird, and Serenity jockeying for position. Same can be said for outside heroes, Kill Devil and Light and Unicorn. But watch out for the north side. Keep going gaming. Is there the single rat, the bear claw, I believe, also nearby it? Oh, oh no, no that's gonna get awkward. KPG! <laughs> they spot them and this is just bad news bears. For heck, bear claws gone now. Oh, uh, he tried. You saw at the start actually. You watched them go past you. He was like, please don't look back. Please don't notice me. Just, just keep going. Wait a minute. Make your way towards the ring. I am not here. But now, nah, unfortunately, uh, 360 degree spatial awareness coming out of Keep Going Gaming, so they do clear their backs, and there'll be no rogue agents stopping them from potentially winning a second game here, Dax. You never know. Yeah. It's very possible, and they are in a good spot to stay away from all that potential carnage. They're on the outskirts, though. Mech's just on the other hand, finding Lugo Hand, and that kill Devil losing a member along the way. Beautiful shots from above with the wingman, Arkstar, gonna get lobbed too. We hear a Dark Void being set, Lightning Unicorn eventually overrun by the likes of Heroes, I believe, but it's still Mech's and his show. Rolling Thunder gonna be the call, sure, but no credit has done some damage already, and they're happy to still stay here by their perch. And you know, not only that, but because they managed to clear out the borders, which I agree was a very heads up play from them, making sure they're not gonna get griefed. They also get, you know, armor swaps, as you can see on the top there. They get the wingman um, that they were running. So it's uh, it's very helpful for them to grab this. The final round is closing now. So they'll lose their spot in that zone uh, and in that house uh, pretty quickly here. But I think no credit, honestly, have done a very good job as keep going gaming. I've uh, really struggled to deal with heroes. I feel like it's uh, it, it really is with no credit hands right now. Yeah, no credit with control. Keep going. And hero skulls are cracked here by Mexus. He has four left in the chamber, but that might be enough for everyone else. We still have Serenity though and War Monster Firebird. Contenders in their own right to a potential crown in this game. Black hole ready here for LK God, looking to lob it towards Serenity, but no credit is on it like a bullet or space being made. Black hole's gonna be there. Serenity stuck in the corner. Here we go again with a dark boy trying to cut up this partition immediately. Make a wall, make a safe haven. That's the call here for Serenity, but no credit on the other hand. Mexico going for the armor swap, still with the elevation, still with the shots from above, and it's easy pickings here from no credit. It's only two squads left. Serenity on one side, and it will be no. Credit on the other, zoom in past yet again, sees them through the wall so far. A little bit of reprieve here from the side of Serenity. No credit has all the fences in the world, and this is looking to be cash money for no credit. They hit the jackpot and they take the last storm point map. Oof, take a breather, Dax. That was a pretty intense Ooh. end game there. It was a fantastic wall. That was, I think, as good as you can get there from Serenity. Uh, I guess one of the interesting things with how those circles play out uh, towards Cascades now is that those buildings aren't as secure as they used to be, right? Like the, 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 the sides of them have been blown off. Um, so you can't necessarily bunker up as well as you used to. Serenity were playing from the bottom floor. Um, they walled completely cut off that left side of, uh, of the arena, and that really just shoved no credit um and who's the other the team that's in there uh, we got serenity you had one was firebird one was a firebird yeah yeah one was a firebird uh and uh no credit then uh, you know you get shoved into each other and then the fences coming up though of course from savior um that allowed them to reset for just long enough um that they could keep um, Serenity at bay and take out the win. So honestly, a, a couple of, yeah, real hero plays 
uh, and very good usage of abilities in that final circle. The utility usage, um, very, uh, very good there. You can see this is where Bugi rips out the wall here. Look at that. Right there, that is a, yeah. that is almost a game-winning play. It's just a shame that they couldn't, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, bring it home. No, I, I agree with you because Serenity, they actually won with a wall like this versus Team Burger in one of the outings last week. But this time around, no credit. You, you gotta say the amount of control that they had. Mex just hitting some nutty shots. And I gotta give it to Savior. Even before I started casting ALGS, I have known of Savior. And he... He was just he was just basically born to play that Watson to begin with. 14 kills though for no credit. They've been looking for a game like this. And even with familiar names, they still did come from preseason qualifier. They take command of a leaderboard with a performance like that. But second place serenity with four, three for War Monster Firebird, and then we get into a few of those big KP teams here, Genome. Yep. Heroes with seven, keep going gaming with six, and boogie borders with nine as Pana had a show to really perform with. Yeah, seven kills for him was fantastic. They thought they were going to be good, uh, you know, on top of that building for a little while longer. Unfortunately, it only got them in 10th, but then, of course, uh, matched there by Mexius with seven kills, who everyone has been saying uh, has really stepped things up and has, uh, you know, brought no credit from being a team that's been relegated a couple of times. Um, save his teams in past Pro League to being a team that, uh, you know, they can... Uh, really take it to, to some of the other top teams in the region. And so no credit put themselves in contention for today. Now up to 30 points for them. Heroes still on top after that first game win. So still riding high there as we end out Storm Point with 40 points. And of course, we've got three games of World's Edge. Now to decide who will walk home with a number one spot after A and B finish up today, Dax. Yeah. It's looking very exciting. We still have the likes of outside there in that third place. You got a team like Boogie Borders still making a few waves near the eighth place. But that is Storm Point. We still got World's Edge, and we will see that map and the rest of the action after this break.
No credit, they cashed that check in that third map and they took that win when it got very, very close with Serenity. But that is Stormpoint. We're moving into World's Edge and we are back for more of Apex South action. You can see it here though, guys, our map rotation so far. And our winners of Stormpoint, Heroes took the first map, Keep Going Gaming took the second, no credit with the third. But we're moving into World's Edge where it's a whole different lot lot of POIs to land on and a whole number of teams trying to get back into the thick of things. Yeah, it's a very different game. Uh, you know, people like Keep Going Gaming, obviously getting contested uh, over on Storm Point. Uh, and they still took out a win. Does that mean they'll be going even better here on World's Edge? That's the question. As we have a look at the beacon and get reminded of where these teams drop over on World's Edge. So, yeah, obviously Team Burger um, keeping it over at Overlook. Heroes are going to be taking over uh fragments with uh god hand actually swapping over to monument this time yeah you can already see it here god hand also going for Sorry, a little epi survey oh, epi and survey camp you got no credit nearby in the skyhook but i i have to talk about what is upcoming very very soon here gino you were talking about keep going gaming will they have a better time here in world's edge well it, it really depends because as we see AGL take trials, we're going to see, of course, Dreamfire in their usual spot as per the Dreamfire way. DNC and KPG, they're going to contest each other yet again. It's going to happen. <laughs> Boogie Borders also, nearby War Monster Firebird. I do believe Boogie Borders does tend themselves to go more towards Lava Siphon. And then you got War Monster Firebird towards staging instead. So either side can just rotate into Mirage Atua, but... I'm really looking forward to that Harvester contest because you can see it in the, in the background there, Gino. It's right there again. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I love it, honestly, when teams do the double contest. It, it is, it is as, the, uh, as the kids say these days, content. Dax. <laughs> uh, going at it. Uh, as you can see, Bear Claw over in Maud with Kill Devil and Akuma fighting over stacks this time. I'll be interested to see if that actually plays out as planned. Um, because, yeah, like, honestly, uh, having extra contests on World's Edge, we expect it more, frankly, on Stormpoint, I would yeah. say, than, than World's Edge. But, uh, yeah, like, even even who gets Mirage Atois out of uh, Boogie Boarding and War Monster Fiber will also be an interesting one. So, so much to keep our eyes on here as we drop into World's Edge. Um, yeah. There's, uh, there we go. So many trails coming towards Harvester. Let's keep our eyes on, uh, you know, our, our perennial, uh, the starters to action here on either map, DNZ and KPG. We're not done. And here we go yet again. Keep going gaming. They're going to unleash the Revenant now. You also have the Valkyrie just for that extra elevation as soon as possible. KH for the Horizon. You can see the same kind of case, but KPG, they've been losing these contests versus DNC. Now they're trying to get revenge immediately and DNC are falling flat on their faces. It has been the keep going gaming day to day. They won on store points. They're winning on World's Edge now, and there's only one member of DNZ remaining here. Wow, looks like they've done that one already. So let's switch over to yet another contest we have. So much action here to start off with. Very fun. Akuma versus Kill Devil. Ooh, a couple of shots coming out from the Rampage. It's uh, feels like the only time you really see this kind of thing. Right at yep. the start of the game, and they pray to start with. We can pick up, and now Akuma looks to pick up the pieces from this point on. Kill Apostle in the front line. The pistols doing work, and a gunslinger die name is Kill Apostle. Another squad bites the dust. Another contest ends, Oof. and it will be Akuma taking it. But Bear well, Gaming, they're ready now. Exactly. I mean, it ends, but it kind of starts as it ends here, Dax. With as you said, Bear Claw Gaming, uh, they're thinking about getting in here. But unusually, I I'd say you know the contest wouldn't always be over by then, right? So. A lot of the times, that'd just be a, a, a free cleanup, a free couple of KP potentially there for Bear Claw. But as they scan, because of course they've got Belkin on the Bloodhound, they go in and realize, oh, it's already done. Okay, look, you know, you know what? Fair play. Congrats for winning so fast. We'll give you a reprieve. We'll give you a pass for game number four here, uh, and they'll start it again in earnest next time. I am sure. Um, what do you mean? 
you know, Bear Claw just yeah. showed up and said, Good job, Akuma! And left. That's moral <laughs> support. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And then looking over to, uh, you know, the other one we were wondering about, Mirage Atois. Uh, we can get that out of War Monster and Lava Fissure. Well, Boogie Borders managed to get Mirage Atois. Um, and what was the Fireboat? They got a little bit of the loot. So they got like the sort of the small town to the south of Mirage Atois. So I guess they're kind of splitting that in the middle there. Yeah, and this is the Dorito right here for Boogie Borders. They already have that ring intel and they want to play towards staging SWQ can say it's the same kind of case and rat check real quick dnz they survive with the one and it will be the conduit so papa can craft those banners and bring them back to life over at geyser but we're watching war monster firebird also nearby we got lightning unicorn actually taking staging away so wffp they might run into swq very very soon here and they see already contact from above yeah, wow, well, they're actually considering these guys are landing at staging, and uh, I'm not going to lie, it looks like there's a very high chance that that's where this ring ends, Dax. Finding themselves on the low ground in zone one, I, not a great spot. This is a, yeah, I don't know, this is a weird play here from Warman to the Fiber. They could have had, uh, you know, very well have had priority into this zone. Um, they don't have the zone info, I will say that much. Um, because they're not playing a scan character, obviously. Even though the beacon spawned in staging, uh, they can't take advantage of it, so they're trying to play from Mirage Atois. And look who's taking advantage of it. SWQ from above, yes, but Lightning Unicorn are so set up over onto Sage and DNZ, though. Papa's found by Heck from Bear Claw Gaming, and that is the action across the map. Still watching here for SWQ, marking the War Monster Firebird. There might be trouble because here comes Dreamfire 2 from Countdown outside, moving in from the side of Thermal Station, and it's War Monster Firebird who's gonna get sandwiched by around three teams by this point. So they are uh, getting taking a few too many shots there as they're trying to make their way up to Mirage Atois, so they will instead play the buildings down the bottom. I mean, you know, look, we saw uh, in previous times when we've had sort of Mirage Atois circles, Dax, that, you know, I think it was Boogie Borders that were up there, and it was like yeah. they were, you know, pirates on the high seas having to repel invaders from every single direction. Uh, and at some point, it just becomes too Enemy much. So maybe area. playing those buildings down the bottom is actually a little bit safer for War Monster Fire, but we'll see who comes out on top uh, in the end as we're having a look um, at how these teams are posted up in zone. You can see... Uh, you know, when this zone closes, we'll get a better idea of where it's sort of pulling. Uh, might even need to wait until zone 4, potentially, to see uh, exactly where this is going. Because there's honestly still a lot of potential endings in. But the fact that the two circles are touching, you know, sometimes that says, oh, maybe it's going to go a bit more southwest. But honestly, yeah. we know on World's Edge that it can just ping pong around a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you try to predict it, it still lands on staging one way or the other, right? Heroes, though, they're setting up in that spot as well. You got God Hand by the train tracks, too. And yet again, Abris B, you're noticing it here. First few rings, you got more than 15 squads of eight remaining. Most of these teams love to play the zone. And over at the edge, it's the likes of Serenity playing so far back. White Flash, AGL with that lesser priority. Legends Gaming, though, on the other hand, the beauty of their playstyle is you can allow players like Player K, Easy Flash, to snipe from afar and build up those armors. They spot out two squads already, and they know now where Boogie Borders and Lightning Unicorn are stationed. SWQ, Crypto Team, have just used that to hit uh, the survey beacon near them. Grab a little bit of info about who's hanging around. Watch out, darlings. Body nearby. Let's put See, in more Firebird working out. Uh, you know, maybe it's uh, maybe it's maybe it is boarding time. Maybe they get the cannons out and start firing broadside as they go up here. Uh, oh, actually, <laughs> okay. Dreamfire have left the ship. It's uh, yeah. they've they've found a a wreck here over the side that they can uh, they can grab the bounty um, without any casualties. Yeah, it's, it's one of those moments, ain't nobody got time for that, and Dreamfire, War Monster Firebird outside, they're gonna have to head in, and this is uh, unfortunate for War Monster Firebird, they had all the priority in the world, now they have no. to go back from whence they came, keep going, game and go, versus Overlook near towards Thermal Station, keep going, hounding them already, Overlook trying to get out of Dodge, and BC wants to hold the line, surprise, he's just deciding to come back and take the fight with the rest of his teammates, with KH, 
So they things up with the black hole. Arc stars being loved. Trying to ping out where these targets are at. Over the though, finding contact oh. courtesy of VC. Shields broken now. Into cover we go for VC. Big C though, finding KH. And this is an opportunity here for Overlook. Nucky shot with the Peacekeeper. Keep going gaming. Equalizing the odds score now. Damage done by Lan and the rest. And keep going gaming. Hold W as they hold strong. Damn, I'm so surprised they turned that around. I mean, that, that car spray was clean. Almost managed to run the but, uh, you know, the SMG is not quite what they used to be in terms of damage output. So KPG will come out on top. And as you were sort of alluding to at the start of that fight, Dax, we are going back to staging. And instead of Warm Monster Firebird having the scan character and just sitting there pretty uh, within the command center, it's actually going to be Lightning Unicorn. Uh, posting up there, and they've got, uh, they've even got Crypto to try and keep teams at bay, but looking further afield, um, you can see these two teams who are just poking at each other a little bit, we've got BCG, um, trying to hit the player beacon, I believe, I shall see Rudine give some smoke cover here to Belkin in a second, so they can try and grab this, but, uh, obviously Serenity know they're going to be doing it, so they're going to be chucking in the bullets in that direction, can they find the space to get this info? I mean, Bear Claw has been chased by Serenity throughout Monument and Fragment, basically. And Serenity have had enough. They can go for the scan, but they're just going to go away from this point on. That way, go. I guess watching into the ring itself, White Flash heading towards Harvester. You got Team Burger inside the Vault Tunnels also trying to find a small spot. And hasn't that been the case here for Team Burger? It's that adjustment where they're at the edge of the upcoming ring. They're trying to be a little bit more mobile in how they rotate, but they're still getting caught out towards those more narrow choke points that they haven't found a way to fight out of. That said, I think they've got a good That's gatekeeping position here, Dax. So yeah. let's see if Burger can make World's Edge more successful than their Storm Point. Um, that said, you can see the spread of teams here that indicates, uh, as we were talking about earlier, there's, there's honestly a lot of rings that this could have been it could have pulled landslide it could have pulled mirage twire it could have pulled uh maybe even more over towards harvester but it does end up just going centrally towards staging and that means a lot of teams are going to have to make uh, a rotation oh. inwards from where they are in the next zone what happened to you kill a boss erased immediately by the sentinel white flash though they get the first down can they go for more energy barricade though keeping them at bay for now Want to push into Akuma, and Akuma's lost two already. White Flash doing some incredible work with the Arc Star 2. Yukoi's down. This is free KP for White Flash here. Teams on every edge of this circle, though, and that means they're not alone. Bear Claw Gaming just lurking around nearby. You can see them up the top, even with a little bit of height advantage, and they're just pushing back. They're taking shots. They're, they're pushing back into zone, and this is going to make it extremely hard for White Flash to get back in, um, despite being the nemesis of Akuma in previous times. Yeah. And just to correct myself real quick, Kraber shot rather, but it wasn't enough versus Bear Claw Gaming there. But here we go again. When you already know the ring wants to go staging, it will force itself there. And that's exactly how the ring pull has occurred. Lightning Unicorn, Heroes, very content with their position right now. Bear Claw, on the other hand, they're here by the edge. Looking to see if they can find any more targets. But they do spot out potentially where Team Burger is coming from. Serenity, on the other hand, they have their own scuffle now. Moving on away. Try and find a good spot to fight. Beautiful shots here from Jesco as well, and Serenity now, they have the advantage here. Well, they do just as Warm Monster Firebird pull up, and all of a sudden, they have to worry a little bit about their backs as well. So AGL just flight managing to take, um, well, sorry, Serenity taking down Jackie from AGL. Um, and it looks like they could probably finish off that fight if they didn't get shot in the back there from almost the fire, who almost managed to take down Bugie as well, was just sitting on top of the RV. That was a, maybe a bit of a controller player moment. Yeah. Well, Serenity, on the other hand, they're still cracking shields from afar. Legacy with the burst bar. Hemlock does back quite a punch. Rolling Thunder also to cover the retreat of the rest of his team. So more months of power for AGL. They're moving now towards the ring. AGL trying to play a bit of keeper as they're responding, Jackie, actually. So they're getting back up as a 3-0. Serenity need to redo the work that has been done already. Nope. Uh.
now. Can they get in fast enough? They should, should see this one was a firebird. They've gone way out. So it's potential there for them to get through. Now as we switch over this um, to go burger and no credit, let's listen in with burger as they try and hold them out here in the vault tunnel. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Healing. They got a horizon queue They swung out, swung out, swung out. Bring Why the hold on us? On you, on you. Main flash. Bring main flash. Unfortunate for Team Burger. And uh, it really has been the problem for Team Burger. They try to go for the gatekeeping position. They fight. They unfortunately lose. And no credit. They continue on with the momentum that they had from the last game. Keep going gaming. Also going to get eliminated now. White flash towards the north side with the fight. SWQ. It's the same case here. They're dueling with God Hand. They have to deal with Lightning Unicorn as Jack Hewitt does get into the action too. The pylon keeping their shields up. And SWQ, they have a perch to work with for the time being. Yeah, under the bridge is okay, but it does rely on teams sort of, you know, choosing not to full send you, choosing not to peek you, because there are often a lot of sight lines open. You have to just sort of dip, dodge, duck, and dive around those. Getting a uh, view of the next zone we're going to see. It could be that uh, kind of classic staging zone that ends sort of half on the balcony, half on the low ground. Um, at this point, if you've got a horizon on your team, you're probably... Pretty happy um, at that point. You can see Dreamfire here finally picked up a couple of kills and they'll be in a better spot than they have been for a while. Also playing Crypto. I, I'm not sure that they were on the Crypto earlier in the day here, so that would be an interesting swap up to change their fortunes. Yeah, they're just looking for justice, but now Bearclaw, they are trained in towards no credit through the smokes, the shots spring from Belkin. Yet again, the beast of the hunt, the beast of this class, the move in by Bearclaw. They already have their fang spared versus no credit. They already knocked down two, make that three as Strafing Flame will find Mexius from the Legends gaming side, and that will be Bearclaw winning that fight. But Legends, Akuma also noticing all that chaos, Dreamfire staying away from the carnage right now and I, th I think that's what we have to watch for for Dreamfire this is the furthest they've been into a game here today which is saying something isn't it because we're still not that far in and uh, it has been rough rough days but as you can see um, continuing to pick up placement points continuing to pick up um, even even more as we get on into this game Crypto, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting comp from Dreamfire, so I'm definitely going to keep an eye on that just to see if this is uh, working a little bit better than what they've been running in previous, uh, in previous iterations. I mean, the results haven't been there, so change is coming, says the Dreamfire faithful. White Flash, on the other hand, it's a duel here up top. They know Dreamfire is nearby. God hand, same can be said. And this Kraber was good from Rococo before. Can it do it yet again? Cracking down those shields, that's big damage done, but doesn't confirm the knock as of yet. EMP, though the play, White Flash is suppressed for the time being. And they, oh, even a black hole to boot, pressure's on, and look who's coming their way. It's the Boogie Borders, ready for this one. Lightning Unicorn still with damage from afar, and White Flash is eliminated. Jack Hute says thank you very much there, Boogie Borders. I'll take those KP. Dreamfire though, this is the test, and they're going after Boogie Borders now. Fussy is already down, Dreamfire. Their moment to make it. It's finally happening here. Unless Boogie Borders can fight back. Answers no. It's Dreamfire taking this spot. And this is why we keep mentioning it. Because it just felt like they always are going to have a pop-off moment at some point. And maybe it was uh, this opposition change that they needed to get them there. To give them some spark of hope. And with six kills already on the board for Dreamfire. And a top six as well. They're looking to push this even further. The circle is pretty much as we expected. Um, some of the high ground will be in, some of the low ground as well. Heroes sitting in that train cart on the low ground. And then 
I've got teams like SW2 down there as well. Lightning Unicorn, of course, uh, we mentioned they've been playing the Command Center for a very long time. But Bear Claw are also going to have a lot of priority from their spot um, coming out of the loot vault onto that eastern platform up the top. Yeah, it's a vintage ring, but will it be vintage Dreamfire? Odds still looking unlikely, and it's he's the only one still standing here. Cracks the shield in front of him, but the fortifications oh, no. of SWQ is just too much to handle. So Dreamfire eliminated the sixth place. It was a decent showing from them. They're going to want to look more moving forward. Ah, uh, to start. To start for the lads, uh, at least, you know, with Countdown, it's a little bit more familiar how they play out World's Edge, perhaps, than Storm Point, and they make something of it here in Game 4. But the team who have, uh, you know, not really had to fight all their way in, perhaps, uh, besides the hard fair core gaming, who have uh, definitely cut this one the hard way, now it's up to them and who can win out this final circle. Unfortunately, they run into the two towers of Legends Gaming and Lightning Unicorn. The high ground, the best ground, and Bear Claw is barely even gonna be a threat here as Belkin's the only one still standing. So he's hiding right now over onto the corner. A rat to try and get those placement points. The clash, though, here at the elevated angle is gonna be massive. Legends on one side, Lightning Unicorn on the other, and Player K takes the claim. Here we go with the pylon. SWQ, though, they're the only ones running the rate right now. They've already caught out Bastion along the way. It's heroes though in trouble. Yuling, portal in, portal out. Someone find a spot to play from as SWQ. They do some damage towards heroes. They're barely alive with one HP on the hero side. Well, some fortifications set up after that EMP comes in, but SWQ, I don't know how long they can keep this up for because LU have trying to take down this com <coughs> complete high ground. As you can see, they were sharing it here uh, with Legends Gaming, uh, but they wanted it all to themselves. Sharing not on the menu. Yeah, that's not gonna happen, and Legends Gaming has been booted away by Lightning Unicorn. They strolled into staging, said, oh, it's empty, thank you very much. And now they have the God Spot here with the elevated angle with Heroes SWQ. They can move a little bit closer to the center as the ring closes on in. Space for Lightning Unicorn to reset, shots to ring. SWQ, gotta get out of that range there, doing that. Don't block those bullets, as 3030 tries to find damage from so far. Okay, three teams left. SWQ have managed to get everyone back up, and Heroes, who were playing very passive at the start of the game, have ended up in third spot with at least two kills to start with. But LU, they fought hard for this high ground. They fought hard for this position. Can they now take the win? They go for the drop and into combat we go immediately. Lalabang moving outside the ring to try and find an angle to survive in. But it's heroes making them work for it. SWQ also pitching in. A triple threat now. A showdown on the ground. But Lightning Unicorn back to the elevated angle. There you go. Heroes though still up with three. SWQ gonna be gone for now. But a wingman shot's looking sublime. Here we go with Jack. you going, 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 gone. Who's next on the list? The wingman yet again doing the dirty work. That's critical. That's that's massive, oh and that's God. a win for Lightning Unicorn. <laughs> I, I mean, it was a 2v3 there to, to finish that off. That is massive for LU. Oh my Lord, that... <laughs> that wing there popped off. It really did there. I mean, that final circle. You saw Jack Cute uh, on the Valkyrie. He actually, you know, he used the VTOL jets to go up top to pop a bat there. Uh, an incredible, incredible finish um, for LU. We saw the swing out into the zone. Didn't really work out um, <laughs> because of how... Uh, because of, uh, yeah, just going into, you know, zone 5. You take so much damage, right? Um, uh, yeah, he's, you know, basically taking as much damage as I am from the sun right now. Uh, my blind fell off uh, last night, which is really not helping my lighting situation. Gino, <laughs> um, buddy, are you part of Team Lightning Unicorn? Because spotlight's on you too, my friend. And, well, the sun does shine on both LU as well as Gino. They got 11 kills in that game. But immediately to kick off our highlights right from that last map, it was, of course, the contest finding their victors. You had the likes of Keep Going Gaming, finally beat out the NC there compared to last week. You also saw kills 
Little Devil, lose out to Akuma, and I guess that's a cause for concern for some of these teams that have to deal with the contest early on. How do they even find a spot to play from if they're just gonna get overrun that early? Another couple of uh, great highlights here from KPG. We've had so many today, honestly, and you know, even just picking up these early KP keeps them ticking along um, and it adds to their total when you've already got a win in the bag that's uh, you know probably going to get you a hefty amount of split points on the end of today. So, uh, big rats to them. Also, big grats to Lightning Unicorn because I like uh, you know it's sometimes finding that line between sort of playing passive and aggression, right? And you know yep. LU they they sat tight for a good you know 15 to 18 minutes of that game and then came out very aggressively to take the high ground. Um, and that, in the end, is is what really won them this game, as Jack Q put on a clinic at the end here um, to take it out with his wingman. Personally, I think this was a perfect game that exemplifies the strength of Lightning Unicorn. They were always shooting from the command center to pitch in and get some KP going. They won a much needed fight versus legends gaming to push them out from that high ground and just have all that elevation to themselves and you mentioned a while ago they did commit into the initial drop they lost lalabang i believe early on but jack cute on that valkyrie verticality is a go 2207 damage by him by the way with the 11 kills made by lightning unicorn it was just that modicum of control that allows lightning unicorn to be such a stellar contender good showing for swq bear claw gaming making it to the top five and with that being said lightning unicorn they're now into the top seven spot after that win yeah honestly less than i thought i guess it must have been a slow start to the day for them on storm point because yeah sitting there at 31 points uh they're still quite a ways off the top that said you know uh with a couple of decent results so far in the split they don't need to be topping every lobby uh they just need to have respectable results to find themselves at lan again and all that hero is still at that top spot. Keep going gaming. Consistency making it second place. No credit outside. Tied up for third. It just was a good showing though from Lightning Unicorn. It's a little unfortunate for one of the Firebird. They, they gave up their initial spot. They had to come on back. And Lightning Unicorn was happy to call it their home. We're going to go for a break though. As match number five is coming your way soon.
What else needs to be said about Lightning Unicorn? Great name and a great game. 23 points in that outing. 11 KP plus the 12, of course, from the placement points. And that allows them to get back in the thick of things. But if you guys are just joining us, you are heading into match number 5 between Group A versus Group B. This is Apex out, so you are watching and playing Apex right now. Thank you for joining us, all the long shot faithful. We appreciate all your support and everyone doing watch parties. Big shout outs to you. I'm Dax here with Genome. And Genome, it's been very exciting. We got an four unique winners so far and it really feels like it's a day where do i dare say underdog right do i dare say the middle of the back teams they're looking to make an impact and a splash moving forward yeah maybe it's it does feel like it's maybe a little bit more sort of middle of the pack necessarily than the teams who are just lagging completely at the bottom um but yeah you know keep going gaming um outside some of those other teams that were yeah, sort of just pushing up in, I think, keeping their hopes and dreams alive of taking out one of those eight spots. Because, of course, it is uh, easier than ever. I feel like in previous years, Dax, when we only had five, maybe six slots available, it kind of felt like, unless you were, were one of the top dogs, it was almost impossible to crack into one of those spots bots right uh, but now that we've got eight it does feel like there's potential for a couple of wild cards a couple of teams who you know don't have to perform necessarily at the top level every single week but if they put in say uh three or four good performances throughout the split they might actually find themselves on a plane overseas and playing in front of a crowd for the first time yeah. in their lives I agree with you. More slots equals more chances for these kind of teams. And the way that they're evolving throughout the weeks, uh, I have to say that it's really good to see them putting in the homework, making sure that they clean up some of their acts and look to perform even better. I guess biggest examples of that have to be White Flash, you got Keep Going Gaming, winning out those contests, and of course, some big damage dealers are players to highlight for. And what, <laughs> what is oh, new? Who would have thought it? Who, who would have thought, right? Template stands, easy flash at the very top with 6,405, but Legends are right, our heroes rather, are right behind them. We got Lahim, you got Kissants, yeah. they're still putting in <laughs> a lot of work. <laughs> I just love that it's like, oh yeah, you know, you'd expect the team who's on top of the leaderboard to be, uh, you know, up there. But regardless of anything else, as always, Easy Flash even taking the crown away from them with over six, almost six and a half K there. And even just looking at some of the legends uh, we've got there and some of the legends that we saw swapped onto as we moved across to World to Edge there, Dax. <laughs> quite a lot of crypto coming in that's been the interesting change there so uh you know swq they <laughs> swapped over to crypto oh we're back, uh, we're back. Oh, you, we're, by yo. the way this is what this is why i keep my fringe uh so that in emergency cases of uh you know sunlight just beaming me directly into the face it you know provides some level of cover <laughs> uh for my eyes there um yeah. I, anyway i, I gotta say it, i gotta say it I gotta say something. This is yeah, the yeah. first time I've seen Seer this split. We finally got <laughs> yeah. a Seer pick, guys, and it's Genome. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, were yeah. you were saying sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. So apart from yeah, it. apart from the mm -hmm. Seer that we're seeing on the uh, the broadcast desk here, uh, we also yeah have seen quite a lot of uh, crypto coming into mm -hmm. to World's Edge. So yeah, SWQs picked it up. Um, we're seeing Dreamfire picked it up as we saw there at the end. AGL. Um, also taking it and then lightning unicorn the only team who was playing that on storm point and then have continued to bring through the crypto um into world's edge so yeah just interesting that uh especially you know some of the the chinese teams as well because i feel like we are finally seeing some of those teams break the stereotype that we've had in the past of chinese teams just being extremely aggressive and playing comps that tend to enable that um then again i guess like crypto can go a little bit both ways like sometimes you see that um uh you know teams are using that for information and especially now that crypto uh, is a recon character rather than a ring console scanning character um it can lean a little bit more into teams who want to run into a fight with an emp and use him in an aggressive manner that way I mean, for me, it's pretty simple. You see a lot of Watsons, might as well send out the cryptos and the EMPs to clean up any kind of setup. Hard to use nades with all those pylons nearby. But I do believe, guys, the game is ready, and we are going to be getting set yet again for another World's Edge. And welcome back. As we go for another one, always eyes. Gonna be 
towards Harvester. You got Keep Going Gaming, you got DNC, and they're already gonna be fighting. Same can be said for Akuma and Kill Devil. And are watching Akuma as they already lose Kill Applause along the way. Crusader looking for any kind of gun to work with. The Rampage, though, is stopped immediately. Yukoi up top. He is just merely a witness to his teammates dying here. And Akuma now losing on the contest early on. Yeah, surely he's not gonna keep fighting this, right? Looks like he's actually dropping down to potentially think about it. I guess he catches one of them off. He does have a Havoc, one of the better weapons on drop. Gets some good beams. Switches over to the 301, and he almost uh, evens it up into a 1v1. But the teamwork from Kill Devil is good enough to take out this one. Uh, meanwhile, Bearclaw Gaming. Uh, by the way, I mean, I know we're, we're gonna watch this contest here as we see the end of uh, DNZ versus uh, KPG. But Bearclaw Gaming, I'm not sure if that was a an insta drop from them or they've just like rotated insanely quickly from Big Maud, but they're over in Geyser, uh, taking yeah. on White Flash. I guess it is just Contest City here in World's Edge, and we are not done with the classic KPG versus DNC. This time around, DNC, ding ding ding, they get on the board and they can finally play a game from Harvester. And it's been a struggle so far for DNC. They're near the bottom with only five points. This is finally a chance for them to rack up a few placements and move forward. Oh, okay. Pathfinder alert, Dax. Ooh. Can you guess, without looking, who switched onto Pathfinder? Uh, I'm gonna give you three themes. You have to tell me okay. if okay. any one of them are gonna go for it. Yep. Uh, honestly, first off the top of my head, no credit. Damn! No way. That you had to have looked. You had nah, to have looked. Nah, dude. Okay. I mean, it, it, look. Level two. No credit is the team that uh, during the first day I thought, are these guys just here to grief? And then they suddenly winning, right? And now, I am right. Mexus yeah. is on the Pathfinder. What What do you think about that? Because that gets pretty wild with the amount of mobility he has for himself. Yeah, that is that's an incredible pick out. I uh, look, I love it, dude. I mean, Pathfinder is one of my favorite uh, legends, and I you know I love to see him back in. I mean, it's a team that we know is uh, uh, no stranger to off meta picks because uh, of course Savior has uh, essentially picked Watson regardless of whether it's in the meta or not for a very very oh. long time. Yeah. So. Uh, the fact that they're getting Mexus as well, uh, now on the Pathfinder is pretty <laughs> damn cool. We're seeing DNZ um, come in with the res there. We've also got some other fun picks like Mad Maggie yeah. also coming out for AGL uh, in addition to the Wraith and the Crypto. So just to, just to recap that, it's a Wraith, Crypto, Mad Mag Maggie team. What is that comp? Smells like 2023 to me for AGL, and it reminds me yet again of those monster games they had on this map, and... Aww. Oh! Oh! That's why. We go again! Hey, at least this time we didn't go to Ring 6. <sighs> I can only... I can only sit here and pray, Dax, that we get the same comps again, because I was... I was getting I really excited to see, you know... Uh, how Pathfinder was going to start pulling that out, you know, yeah, like, to get sent by a Crypto Mad Maggie Wraith team, like, yes, please. I, I do wonder if that's maybe because uh, one of the War Monster Firebird players yeah. didn't uh, didn't load into that game, so potentially um, they're getting a third back in there. Yeah, but <laughs> it's unfortunate. We did get to watch a lot of spicy contests, though, and it does get exciting here, knowing that these teams are ready to fight each other from the get-go. But yeah, I do believe we're going to get a bit of a lobby reset. It's a little unfortunate for some of the victors we've seen so far, but it is what it is. Uh, I guess, though, I, we kind of have to go back to some of the stats from the previous World's Edge map, right? Because, truthfully... This was the first map for World's Edge where we were like, oh, we got some spicy picks. We got the Mad Maggie. We got the Pathfinder. Because a while ago, it was mostly those similar picks that are usual to the Apex Out meta. But anyway, speaking of Apex Out, we'll throw it over the video. Check this out, guys. been a long time a long time coming and now they get that opportunity because in their own little bubbles they probably think that they're the best now they can prove it welcome everybody to the casters desk for the very first time it's been a long time coming i'm falling out joined alongside vicky kitty 
Waltzy to try and clutch it out one on two. And I dare say that's going to be a difficult task because Azel will have in purple armor. Frogs obviously get the time now to just reset. In fact, not even going to switch hard on board. Waltzy trying to just play around and he's now been able to put it into the one on one. Maybe a big clutch for the team from Apex South. Waltzy still has the armor to play with. Pits flesh. Was that on the down player? Was that on the player that he's fighting? I'm not too sure. Some cracks going through. Waltzy now has the advantage and clutches it out for Sutha Raikou. Demon, bro, what's that? Run into it. Do they try the Valko? Do they use the Crypto Spam to run the distraction in the meantime? Good job. Look how far they go. That dome is deep. And they've got plenty of opportunity. Looking to fight some more. And Spit fight Woo! coming out again. Revan Esports don't care about your gold armor. Sit down. Dewa in a great spot, though. They're going to down them again. Bastion with the Peacekeeper coming out here from the high ground. Could they be the first team from Apex out here to find victory? This is the best opportunity for them to do so. So, full armor, full HP, and a massive chance to convert, to find victory. They take out Onyx. It's only Yuki left, and he cannot stand in their way. Apex Sound, welcome to the ALGS playoffs. They're going to get shot in the back. Yeah. They're right here, right here, right here. Good Try and put pressure on them. Try, yeah, good night, good night, good night. Good night. They're, they're right here, they're right here. They're, they're going to end. 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 Don't go to the it's fine, 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 the best team in APAC South for a reason. They've been so dominant, and even with a sub JMW from the UK, they are here to play. I'm resting him. Stick it. Bobbing. He's gonna go. Yeah, they're going to hang out behind the rock here. They got the mobile respawn beacon to play off of the gaming. Is engaging with Luminosity, reignite the goal win for the third party and take this entire victory. LG is out. After game, skill games goes out as well. Zero going to do it. Wide left play, and they're just like that. Put some respect in Apex South's name. Holy shit. The region that was made fun of the most. The region that was talked about saying they're the worst by far with the least experience. Taking home the land and taking home a quarter of a million dollars, Greek. We just witnessed history. History. History there is the right word. Apex out. They've made history the past few years. You know that we want to do it yet again. And that's why we're here again for Group A versus B of Apex out in the ALGS. We are going to be getting into the game very, very soon. Map number five ready yet again. Take two. We got all 60 players in. We got our legends picked on up. And it's not that spicy this time around. But you know what's going to be spicy? The action. Let's get into this game. Very well, could be, Dax. I mean, we had, what was that, three contests last time? Uh, <laughs> it's a shame <laughs> that uh, Bear Claw, it looks like they're actually going to go back to Big Maud, so their surprise maneuver is not going to get repeated. Uh, but we will have another shot of Akuma versus Kilda. Exactly what happened a while ago. Killaboss is first to fall. Here comes Akuma though, trying to set up a crossfire. Yukoi fetching out one. Eva 8 from afar. Akuma now bringing in the damage too. And Flesh. Here comes KD Kill Devil. Keeping the advantage going. Yukoi now with purple armor. He can be a one man army for Akuma from this point on. Looking for anyone else to fight here. It's going to get very testy as he's trying to find in the stacks any other targets. That's 
right now. Kill Devil. They have moved on away. Tries to go for confirm, and Nikoi can't find anyone to fight until there's the contact. The 2v1 is too much to handle, and Akuma's gone. Keep going, also losing the contest all the way in Harvester 2. As you said, DNZ coming out on top in that one. Um, we also have, uh, yeah, as you said, uh, sorry, every, everything else uh, pretty much went as planned. So BCG uh, not making white flashes a life hard. I mean, they're going to be pretty happy they got the lobby reset, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> uh, imagine just dropping into one game, not even, you know, remotely expecting a team to come at you. Um, of course, they would have been uh, very much keeping their eyes on the dive trails of the teams around them as it happens here uh, in our second go of uh, match five. And as you just saw there, we will get another fairly southern zone. This one uh, potentially not so much staging and maybe a little bit more towards Thermal Station or Harvester. Yeah, the results repeat in the contest. You can see multiple Pangalors inside the lobby already. Khan with their Sin for the round six alongside Catalyst. Watson has overtaken them back once we moved here to World's Edge. And we still see a few of those outliers. Some raid picks have been fruitful with the portals to just stay away from all the action. Revenant something that we've seen from Keep Going Gaming to a mixed degree. And of course, a Mad Maggie into play. So it's getting a little bit interesting. AGL has to be the team everyone's watching out for in terms of something a little bit wacky compared to everyone else. Awesome right here. I'm sad. True report. Pathfinder. Ladies and gentlemen, we no longer have a Pathfinder in the game. Unlucky. Oh man, I don't know if that's because maybe, like, like did they know that the lobby was gonna get restarted because uh, the player wasn't in there and so they were like, they just went for a troll pick? Like, is that is that what happened? I, I mean, I, it could be. Yeah. I'd be sad if it was, but. Come on. Uh, I, I'd, I'd love to see Pathfinder find its heyday again. It, it's so fun to see grappling hooks and the like. But instead, we watch people play with evac towers, fly on around here at the Winds Thermal Station, and look, he's at the center of that POI already. Lightning Unicorn looking to replicate success, just like last time around. We're sitting pretty in the center, outside Legends Gaming, taking the compounds towards the north instead. Yeah, no, uh, no ring console for Lightning Unicorn this time, but luckily they are playing their own POI, and I'm kind of respecting that, and I think they'll be rewarded outside. You can see them using that Skyward Dive to get a bit further in. Also, don't have the info here. Um, more teams than ever, it seems, playing without that ring console, without that zone information that's so important in predicting rings. Um, and they're going to go for a spot alongside the train tracks here. Um, also, the mountain, not honestly a bad spot. Kind of getting there, so there's no credit getting to it. And a gamble there from Manchester, though. Full sends it in the front line. And here comes the rest of no credit now to clean up the rest of God Hands. So they bring up Mexius. That was wild from Mexius. You could see how he just went zoomed towards the opponents there. Yeah, big stuff. And that's that's what you need, right? They, the fight actually was looking a little bit sus there for no credit. But uh, just through sheer force of will. And um, we do see Mexius. Showing what he's made of there to, to, to help turn that one around. Um, and honestly, a team that's looking pretty good as far as this series goes today. No credit looking to put some split points on the board. Yeah, it's been a good day for no credit. Same can be said for other teams like Lightning Unicorn. I could have said it for Keep Going Gaming, but they're already eliminated. And watch out towards Harvester because DNC is still around. Deep Burger will be Enemy the same spotted. case. And they spot it now where DNC are. Shooting by the bins, trying to get a few pot shots going. And Team Burger, for them, I guess one thing has to happen. Win a fight, win a 3v3, and get that confidence moving forward. I mean, that's nuts, right? Seeing them in 20th place. Team Burger? You mean, you mean Pricey, who won a winner's bracket at LAN? You mean Sharky, who's got a championship to his name? How on earth are they sitting in 30th place? It's, it's unfortunate to say the least for Team Burger, but the pedigree says it all. It will happen eventually. That's what Team Burger is trying to show us right now. 
no credit. Nayak is speaking of no credit. Now they're taking the fight to another squad. This time around, it's Dream Fire here towards Lava Fisher. Just still with the crypto though for Pete. He got no credit looking around for any kind of momentum. But this is getting a little bit dangerous actually. Mexius is all by his own. So Dream Fire now might have the angle with 3MC. Very cheeky. He's the one actually in trouble. And he is already down by Dream Fire. So 3v2, Dream Fire has the numbers advantage here. Yeah, if they hold up a little bit here, I mean, they've got the Radiant Transfer to honestly give them um, that uptime here to get into the fight, but they let no credit reset. They've got the time now, they've put down an Interceptor Pylon, they can start getting set up here. You can see they've even got the Digi there for Mexus on the R99s, a certain option for no credit to play this Dream Fire, potentially missing their opportunity. Yeah, it has been the case for Dream Fire, just unfortunately allowing the opponent to get back as a 3-0, and the ultimates keeping no credit alive. Dream Fire, though, just gonna bail on that, move towards Mirage as well, where the people are just outside are also waiting all the way across. Bearfall Gaming versus Kill Devil over at Lava Fisher. Kill Devil losing one early on. Here comes Falcon, though, sees everything, knows everything, and he's ready not to shoot them down. The 30 30 packs a punch and Bear Claw Gaming wins the fight. It will be Kill Devil eliminated now. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Turbo Flat uh, sorry, Turbo Havoc there, as well as the, um, the big Maw, the Rampart Flatline there for Belkin. That's a pretty hefty loadout for a man who can uh, certainly deal damage like nobody's business. Oh, a pullback. We get a hard shift of the ring that says maybe stage it is uh, going to be kept making a comeback here. I mean, stage is always a consideration. We have to watch that now for Serenity versus DNZ over on the Harvester. They've been looking for any angle to work with. The Dark Void's still available here for Boogie. They have a bit of height to work with too. But DNZ... And as of right now, they're staying alive as a three still. Let's relocate there. So it's interesting that uh, despite Stormpoint being a map with A versus B, team surviving till very late in the game before we're getting a lot of these hard engagements. It's very much the opposite here on World's Edge. Not only have we got several contests, but you're also seeing fights break out in a lot of POIs that are peripheral to where a lot of the teams are parking themselves. You know, yeah. we just saw one in Lava Siphon. Now there's uh, some fights over in Harvester, potentially um, over towards Mirage Atoire as well. If Dreamfire um, go past outside, maybe not. Flying a bit further there. Sometimes you gotta consider, right, without that initial ring console intel, these rotation paths are pretty similar, and teams are running into each other because of it. Bearclaw now, they have to deal with Z and Z on the opposite end. Rudnay pushes forward, the smokes are there to do a bit of damage. Heck, you can say the same for the 30-30. Z and Z in cover for the time being. They still have a better angle into the ring, though. Bearclaw now making their mark and making their way in. Rolling Thunder gonna be the call. The Beast of the Hunt is unleashed, and Belkin will always lead the charge because of it. Looking out to mow them down, that Havoc has a turbo charger, and it doesn't have that negative penalty anymore, but the Black Hole will coincide. DNC decide to take the fight towards Belkin and the rest, and it's Bearclaw now, wounded, hurting, and can they get out? That's the question. It seems like it's getting unlikely for everyone else besides Heck, who will evacuate. Yeah, it's uh, DNZ responding like they're the caged animal backed into a corner this time, and Heck does manage to get out. Doesn't have the option to either recover or craft banners, though, without conduit on the team. So DNZ will just pick through the loot here. A uh, nice little pick up for them in terms of KP and loot, because they're going to have to continue back north after this. Yeah, they're not done with their path to the zone. And we're watching here for Dreamfire also playing a little bit more safe than usual. Using the crypto to scout around. We saw that a little bit last week. Just to get the intel, especially towards elevation. But they might run into Legends Gaming, who has still been parked here outside of Thermal. Same can be said for Lightning Unicorn. Most of the teams in the Thermal Station here, Genome, they don't have the intel. So they're sticking around in that spot. AGL, Bearclaw, DNZ, and Serenity. Those teams instead from the east are the ones looking to make their way into the next one. 
Alright, and yeah, as yeah. the circle does close again, we get a bit of a shift. It looks like it's uh, potentially a little bit different this time. It's on top of the uh, the little house with the respawn beacon over to the east of staging. And at the moment, outside, uh, sitting in there. So as you can see, uh, a nice spot for that team at the moment. The uh, the tiger is over there, and then we're going to see, uh, once again, yeah, just a lot of teams collapsing inwards. It's not going to be one of those ones where you've got one, um, you know, sort of uh, very congested front, and you see a lot of teams die at once. I think we'll get another zone where there's honestly uh, a bit of space for everyone, um, and a lot of sort of spread out fights all around the edge of this next circle. Speaking of the edge, also Boogie Borders left to a single player while Warmonster Firebird and Dreamfire might find poor Raki out in the distance. Watching out though for Overlook Entertainment too. They need to deal with White Flash, Lightning Unicorn. Those are potential targets nearby, but White Flash still. Do they see this one coming, turning all around now to spot out Overlook Legends on the other hand. They need to make their way in and they want to take the spot from outside. They disengage though, Train Tracks is the call. And White Flash, cause for concern here. Two white armors, one blue. Overlook, if they understand the situation, they might get the overrun immediately. I mean, there's so much further down, and they've got teams, uh, obviously there's just one team to the west of them, and the Lightning Unicorn underneath there, inside the tunnel. So Overlook might have to decide which team to fight here. I think White Flash is the better option, but they do take the initial uh, for this. Yeah, and that arm start so you're bringing in damage, so surprise -y. Also, same can be said here to Big C. BC is the only one here alive. Overlook Entertainment, how did it go so very wrong? As White Flash lived to tell the tale until War Monster Firebird have made their way in. The drone still being a bit of a bother, but LK and the rest now with the elevated angle. They see a target though, they crack down the shields of Prota, and White Flash is gone now. Yeah, LU even also just popping out of their little hidey hole in the tunnel to see if they can pick up some of those kills. They don't manage to get one yet, but there we go. Gop Gap's taking down BC. Overlooked Entertainment completely gone. And Warmaster Firebird, I think, are probably going to leave LU alone. Going back over to Dreamfire here. They are currently coexisting with SWQ, who are playing underneath the building. But, uh, you know, potentially... Uh, EMP already used, but Dreamfire still don't want to leave this alone. They're going to go out. Oh, but Pete goes down. Yeah, Dreamfire, though, has done some immense damage. It's SWQ here in trouble, but look who's come. There's way Legends Gaming as well. The third party kings continue on with what they want to do and how they do it best. Hunt down any other target in their way. Dreamfire is now wounded, hurting. Cracked down and he might be gone soon. Strafing flame, there is no escaping this fire whatsoever. And that was just lit from Legends. And if there's something that Legends Gaming are doing very well this split deck, it's identifying opportunities and not even remotely hesitating when they go for them. You saw then, uh, you know, the scan comes out from Strafing Flame on the Blood Hand now. And yeah, immediately they move in, they try and make something happen. Uh, you know, you compare that to a team who's not had that kind of experience. Like Kill Devil, earlier on, we saw them holding out near the spiders on Storm Point. There was such hesitation, and Kill Points went begging because of Legend Gaming will not let that happen. Ground though, ATL for DNZ, the black hole, post mortem, and that is it from DNZ so far. You still got Team Burger though, you got Serenity nearby, Legends Gaming here from afar. And if you've noticed too, the Bloodhound now, the Mad Maggie from before. Lots of changes for Legends Gaming in the front line, especially. Let's listen into them as they approach this ring. Alright, five seconds on scan. I'm ulting here. Yep. We might swing this. Any hits? I have no DJ. Wait, there. It's a solo, bro. I didn't see him. It's a solo right here. Is it a yeah, horizon? That was a bang as well. Oh, no, they, they, oh, they're, the they're playing on the corner, Clem. They're playing on this spot. There's a solo on me. Solo on me. Yeah, you, you, can, you can kill that. Huh? He's there, gone, he's a... gone. They're fighting, they're fighting. Do where? Fighting where? I'm done. Careful, careful. Across tracks. Careful across, across tracks here, okay? Okay, okay. 
It's a, it's a, they, they're playing this, they're playing this. Yeah, I'm not scanning, I'm not scanning. They, they have to come to yeah, us. you're right, you're right. They're gonna evac here. We have to get ready for that. Ooh, there's a team here as well. Yeah. We just can't do anything. Fuck. Can, can what, I? What, what are we safe on? Can we, can we gen on that and yeah, play that? Yeah, we can, we can. We can, careful we can. Careful left, 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 left. left. Can we? Can we? Left, though. Light, light, I mean. There, there's, actually... a, there's a solo. Can we pick this player? I, I have to watch behind. You can walk up plane. Okay, okay. I'm watching behind. I've got like a million fences. I... Yeah. He died. Oh, you killed him. No. I, I, I did the solo. I did the solo. I, I killed the solo. Yeah. Careful, flame. It's a uh, full team on the right side, though. Yeah. I smoke you. I'm running back. I have no DG. I have no DG way. as well. Careful. I don't have ult anymore now. I'm gonna go back, back up again. Yeah, careful with the C-Bag. We're gonna Ubas. Get ready here. We have to fight this. Oh, we if we, the, we, you we get landed on player life. Yep. I need ultimate if you have one. No. Yeah, I dropped one. Okay, they, they got over. That's one. really good. Just careful they don't sort back. That's fucking amazing for us. We take one 3v3 against the team across. We yeah. win the fucking game, okay? Yeah. Yep. That's it. We just have to hold this team east. They're walking yeah. up. It's a good, it's a bow. It might be crypto bow. Yeah, it's crypto. On the on the on the on I click this. Put it, put it, nice. Plus. Hey, pick over hey, the you, you, you say, you say, yeah, 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 I say, I say, I'm safe. I take the kills. Oh, I can't shoot it, I can't shoot it. I cannot, I only got it. I'm just healing, I'm just healing. Yeah. You can look over my, I'm checking this loot while we still can. Cannot. Careful getting queued on, okay? Like Horizon queue? Yup, yup. Can we look for kills now? Look there's Maggie, there's Maggie on the beam. Look at this wing, bang. I'm, I'm scanning under. Uh, we're, we're full good. We have to careful for, for this thing. One hit, one hit. One hit. Mark, if you want, I you can play bridge now. You can play bridge now. You can play bridge now. No, no, me? Mark. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me, you. let me heal. I can't come all. I can't come all. Let me, let me heal. Careful. To... You go heal, here. Maybe, maybe you have to go down and, and Jen instead, player. Maybe you have to go down. Yeah. Me and Mark play late. Do we have another ult excel? No. Can you, give no. Me, can you give me helmet? Fine. Uh, yes. I, I'm 35 now. I, I have ult for endgame. Do I have to wait? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we? We can't. There is. Can Don't yeah, use nades. Bang on, bang on, bang on. Nice. That's nice. That's good for us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We just have to focus this team, guys. Yeah. This is the only team that stops <laughs> us from winning. Careful, we get low ground as EMP and like Horizon, okay? It, it yeah, shouldn't yeah. happen, but just be careful of that. I, I, I think I might drop down. Do they have to go faster than I, I'm us? Dropping, I'm dropping, I'm dropping. You have to set up now. Yeah. I'm playing in this. Net, 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 net. Yeah, you have to gen now, player. Yep. You can't get yep. nated. I think I have to jump too. I, I think I'm gonna jump now, guys. Like, I can't yeah. stay up here. Damn it. Can we? Can you ult them? Can you? They might push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ulting, ulting, ulting. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yep. I'm no DG. He went back, he went I'm, back. I'm, he went back, I'm, he went back. I'm hitting him. Horizon, don't push, don't push. Horizon crack. Horizon one. Horizon one, left corner, nade. Nade. I'm, I'm nading, I'm nading him. Nade. I need you, I need you in this. Bang low, bang low, bang low. Bang low. I can't see anything. Low. Horizon! Stay on us! Stay on us! Quick! I'm standing for you! Standing for you! We're chilling! We're chilling! We're chilling! I'm going around! I'm going I took swap! Skills! 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 I have DG mark! I'm back! I killed the right side! I'm keeping the G! Yeah, they're all on the right side! I'm not DG! I'm on the right side! Last team right here! Focus this! Swinging out! Swinging out! Snap wing man! I'm nading that! I need! I need! I need! Also! Yes! They're still inside, walking, walking! Crack, 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 crack! I broke Jen! One, net, I put this guy! Crack, 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 crack! On me, on me! It's crack, 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 again! Nice, last one, let's get! Let's, we get this way! Nice one! Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to do anything that end game! <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
Incredible scenes there from Legends Gaming as we get a master class in calling from Strafing Flame. You can see him thinking several steps ahead there, identifying which positions they're going to have to play against, uh, you know, which 3v3s are important uh, for them buying that space to win the end game in, and ah, uh, they get it in the end. I mean, you know, there was no there was no sneaky gravity lift thrown out by a third-party team to, uh, you know, grief their chances like happens uh, famously to uh, TSM at LAN, you know? They, uh, they win from the catwalk at staging, uh, and Legend Gaming gets their dues. It is insane to think about how that went for Legends Gaming. Gotta say, the calls were sharp. The shots were even sharper from the lives of Straight from Flame and Easy Flash. It's probably one of our longest listed ins for good reason. And you have to see how confident Legends Gaming is, especially with their IGL Straight from Flame. It's something they worked on all throughout the past year and more so. But this game, it got very exciting until Legends Gaming took command and took it all. There were always the contests that we would see. You see KD, Bear Claw Gaming, you have some moments also from the likes of outside from no credit actually one of the teams that legends gaming had to remove from that high ground but in the end it's still the 12 ap and the victory by legends gaming you said it already genome it's a master class for a reason and that is that kind of game we've been looking for from them for so long already and honestly, it wasn't even like they had to try that hard. You, I mean, you heard, I, I think that was player K there at the end saying like, I didn't even do anything, man. Like I just, I just sat up there and chill while Easy Flash and Strafing Flame were running amok in that lobby. Incredible stuff uh, from our, uh, I was about to say champion team, but you know, our best placing Apex South team uh, at the hey, championship. Yo. It's calling it already, but Legends Gaming, I, I have to go back to how they've shifted this comp for a bit. They tried a little bit of Mad yes. Maggie last week to have more aggressive frontline from Strafing Flame. Now they're going for the Bloodhound for more intel, more reconnaissance, and also the Beast of the Hunt, of course, to just hit those shots even inside the smoke. And you can see the results here for Legends Gaming. Easy Flash and Strafing Flame. Almost 2,500 damage for each 10 kills through their name. Player K doing an incredible job also, also to support the team. His fence there at the very end. Cheeky but helpful just to keep outside cage there over on to the corner no credit serenity and heroes make it to the top five and it's a little bit unfortunate for the likes of bear claw gaming lightning unicorn eliminated there in the top 10 same can be said for dnc and dreamfire but with a performance like that legends gaming they're only one point away from taking that top spot away from heroes Ooh, yeah late push from legends gaming here with uh now sitting at 29 kp the most in the lobby uh, after that deadly game five there but uh hero still holding on uh that's it outside and no credit uh, especially you know maybe keep going gaming as well we'll throw them into the mix there uh, a couple of these teams that uh, have had you know maybe a mediocre start to the season now really hitting their stride and trying to uh, put some big points off the uh, up on that split points table because you got to remember uh if you're at the you know maybe the top five uh in uh, a series you get uh, a lot more points than the teams below that. You know, if you're going from, say, like 11th to 10th, you pick up like one point, but you pick up like two, three, five points when you're um, getting into those top positions. And with that performance from Legends Gaming, we're going to need to go on a break. We will return for our final map between A versus B after this.
What else can we say besides brilliance there? Legends Gaming taking map number 5 by storm. And we're going to hear it all from Strafing Flame and the rest and how they did. We are back so in A versus B here in Apex South. And you can check out Legends Gaming and their run so far. Genome, look at that map number 5. And what else can you say about it besides all the positive things you've done so, so far with? Damn, the double dozen there with uh, 12 KP to back up that first place. And as you can see, uh, you know, a lot of placement points coming their way, but uh, not really slouching on the kill side either. That is what is putting Legends Gaming, uh, I think it was one point off the top of this lobby so far. <laughs> Yeah, they have four games in that top five. A monstrous game in the third, in that map number one with the third place standing. And then that 24 point game that we just listened into. So Legends Gaming, they put themselves in a good spot to take the whole day. But they're still contenders to this matchup. It's still, of course, Heroes at the very top with 59 points. You got outside there in third place with 49. No credit. Keep going gaming. Probably that top five can fight for that spot. But really, momentum is such a heavy thing that we watch utilize in these kind of maps right you know and legends gaming they have all the momentum right now moving forward with yeah exactly uh they're gonna be feeling so high after that one as we have a look at some team composition picks here um you can see the the variety we've had this week is often uh is, is honestly fascinating and you know up towards the top bang bloodhound catalyst is one of the top picks so um as this season has progressed i think it's actually been getting uh it, it, maybe even the opposite of what we usually get i feel like often you know there's a bit of a meta and then oh sorry there's you know people try things out and then it narrows as people work out what's good i feel like this season's almost been the opposite um with you know those couple of uh, heavy picks like bangalore and whatnot sort of uh, being in there, but people have been experimenting more as the season or the split has gone on here in 2024. Yeah, it feels like there's a bit of an anti-meta forming with the Crypto versus the Watson yeah. and the likes of having the Bloodhound to have that scan versus the Smokes. Apex out trying to find its own answers as the weeks go on. But this is it for this matchup, for this day. We still got A versus C later on, of course. But A versus B will go to a six map right here, right now, as we go back into World's Edge. You know the deal here, Genome. Contests will happen. Not just once, but twice. We watch Harvester, we watch Stacks, and we watch if anyone else wants to throw a wrench in anyone else's plans. We are back here in Apex Out. We are back here in World's Edge. And we are watching Akuma do what needs to be done versus the likes of Kill Devil yet again. Yep, two teams contesting at the same time. We'll bring you as much of the action as we can. Um, a little bit of a disengage in the other one with DNZ and KPG, I can tell you. Uh, but over here, yeah, teams have dropped on separate buildings instead of the same buildings this time. Uh, Bearclaw Gaming, did they actually... I think they griefed some loot from Stax and then started walking their way over to Big Mord because they knew the other teams would be too busy with each other. So Bearclaw Gaming are honestly having a lot of fun in this lobby, just, you know, messing things up, whether it's uh, for the team up in Geyser or this time uh, for Kill Devil. And for Bearclaw. Oh, sorry, and yeah, Akuma. They've been a big factor of annoyance here in the southeast side of the map. But we have to watch out for DNZ and keep going. They also have a degree of separation between each other. DNZ on the south side of Harvester. Keep going more so towards the north. And Kill Devil marking now where Akuma's headed. Akuma has avoided that contact. But the problem is they're the ones losing that armor. And they're only on whites here. Yukoi Crusader. Already down to flesh, kill Devil on the hunt here to try and pick up KP early. Yeah, okay, so the Harvester Contest seems to have uh, thinned out here with the teams disengaging completely. Um, but over here, we finally got it going on in earnest. Kill Devil trying to hold the height. They can push through smokes, but Lemmy getting caught off guard there by the PK. Um, it's gonna be finished. 
Yeah, stellar shooting there from Killapaws. The R301 doing enough damage in that instance. But here we go again. You were calling them out, you know. We're gonna see Bear Claw Gaming look for the third party. Waiting for this moment to come at a moment's notice itself. The scan now, courtesy of Belkin. Akuma on the Let's inside still. Here. They're holding steadfast right, as three kill. Devil had enough after losing a single member in that contact. And Bear Claw's the one swarming this building me? now. Well, Akuma back up to a full three there. Help essentially at this point. Crusader does take quite a bit of damage there through the window. Finding nice angles are Bear Claw. So now they really do have the option to start the roll. Luhan uh, just on the knockdown shield watching this uh, from the spectator side, but Bearclaw do take a casualty as well. That was a little too spicy there from Belkin. Akuma on the other hand have shotguns, have the L star, and Bearclaw oh. Gaming, they wanted to be the third party, but the first <laughs> one's actually eliminated here. Unfortunate to say the least for Bearclaw as Akuma. They even hold with the three so they just need to bring up Crusader and survive to tell that tale. This is their stacks to win. I'm, uh, uh, that's honestly kind of hilarious because as we noted, Bearclaw were literally looking to third party this contest the entire world's edge, but uh, previously it had finished so quickly that they, re they couldn't really get in there uh, to make an impact. Finally, it does drag on for a little bit and they get their shot, but wow, a Kuma. Uh, doing better than they had expected. And off the back of that, by the way, Kill Devil went down and all three of them will be respawning back in down a dome. Yeah, they look for the reset. We fight all the way in. Staging it's AGL versus no credit. XX immediately gone to the wayside as Jackie tries to use the windows to poke and throw it against that armor. They grab the shields already. No credit still with three. Beautiful beam here from Cheeky. And QQ flies high just to die. Confirm is key. And Cheeky with armor swap can't survive though after all those bullets as Dreamfire wants to get a piece of the action. Three MC with elevation. No credit now. Have to evacuate and leave Cheeky behind as AGL they survive with Jackie too but Dreamfire are here to mop up the rest of the pieces left behind here interestingly XX just deliberately went down as well um, so he uh, I was watching their, their POV here I know we're gonna watch Dreamfire here just pick up some of that loot uh, so he deliberately went down I believe because Jackie is the one left alive uh, so that he can get his banner Right, so he's on the crypto, he can grab that quickly with the drone, but he, he walked himself in the knockdown shield through uh, a perimeter fence back and forth until he was deathboxed. Yeah, well done. And that's the beauty of having crypto. Some of these teams, they play the conduit for support. You can craft those banners. But here and now with the crypto play away and AGL are looking for the res towards the north side of Skyhook. No credit though. Marking where Dreamfire can come from. Team Burger also hearing all that action after struggling so far in this session. But we got to talk about the ring and countdown near the center here. Looking to be likely for these teams to go to. Yeah, does it end countdown? Does it end, uh, you know, I feel like it hasn't ended near the uh, RV outside of the tunnel all that often oh. in recent seasons, but Godhand are posted up there, uh, at least giving themselves options. Like, it's still not necessarily the worst place to play from, but they don't have a Watson. It does tend to be a little bit better if you can stop the nades coming in. Uh, they've only got the catalyst to, uh, to try and prevent some of that damage. Heroes is playing by Landslide with a um, good amount of armor as well as guns to play from. Got SWQ towards Countdown as well, but looking at War Monster Fiber right now. They're nearby Mirage as well, looking to find the outside. No credit on the other hand. They're the ones who are going to get the rest, so back to a trio they go. AGL also respawning, so the fight from Skyhook, it will continue soon with the same faces. Round two, perhaps. Uh, with AGL back into the action. Of course, you got to remember you come in. Uh, you spawn in hot now with uh, your guns. Sure, you lose your attachments, but you've got uh, you know the armor that you had as well. So uh, won't necessarily be an easy fight for no credit. Um, but you know a couple of scopes on their side will help them get the damage in probably quicker onto AGL if they can find them. That's it. Oh, interesting shift. It actually has gone very centrally. Um, so as you can see, their teams like Burger uh, may once again, they're trying to put themselves... That they've been playing from these tunnels a lot so far, this, uh, uh, you know, this world's edge, Dax. Not that it's been going that well for them. It feels like every time they get sent, they just 
Uh, you know, they crumble, and it's tough when you can see they've got one blue and two white shields. Very fair point. Just because they've been playing Gatekeeper for so long, but they've never had the keys to the kingdom of success. And not only that, Team Burger, you still have to talk about the history between this team. You got Pricey, you got Sharky, you got Wei. Those names have made waves even in the global stage and it's unfortunate to see them struggle like this back in their own region they could be sent to god's hand though but the newer faces to the block this time around and here comes heroes now waiting for someone to come at the flat side now we'll have two teams nearby outside on one side heroes in an elevated angle and a pylon keeping a flow and the rest alive here towards the left because lightning unicorn is poking from the side too lightning unicorn in seventh spot looking to perhaps make the late push here for a podium finish. Oh, nice name from Jack. He's going to take Sato down. And all of a sudden, that sort of opens things up here over in the land side. You've got heroes holding it down from the other side as well. They're actually trying to play uh, a position. They've got the ring information because they've scanned uh, the zone three here from the beacon, from the ring console that is available inside landslide. Uh, and this makes their position quite tenable um, as they want to hold uh, the landslide uh, side of, you know, around the, the left side of the mountain, essentially. Yeah, they know where to go, but no credit. On the other hand, they know they have to fight against AGL yet again. The reprieve, the redo, and it's the same spot we saw them before. Someone wants to conclude this fight already, and no credit are on the hunt. Jackie, though, confirming cheeky. Here comes Saber, pushing on forward. Junkin in hand, 3MC, packing quite the punch. And QQ's the one making those raids happen. But here we go again. The raid is alive, but barely. One more time and one more show. Sure, AGL is gone, but look who's ready to pick up the pieces from where we left off. Reinfar still happy to play the third party. And it truly is deja vu here in Skyhook. Yeah, but Burger have come in on the other side as well. How did Dreamfire get out of this? How did they get back into the ring? They managed to get access to those death boxes and pick up a lot of loot. Burger did not get there quickly enough to have that same benefit, so they're still sitting on white, white, blue, pricey just now uh, being able to pick up a purple. Yeah, Team Burger at least changing the fate of the battle. I really thought we just played the footage from three minutes ago and said, oh, it's happening right now. A Dreamfire have disengaged, back to countdown, they go. And I think right now I'm watching over for Landslide still being the contesting point. Lightning Unicorn, they did such a good job a while ago with clearing out the pylon. That's why you play the crypto and they were the first ones to innovate on it during the first day of ALGS Apex out. And Legends Gaming now, on the other hand, here towards the Eastern ta Train Tracks, Serenity are marking them, but they're going to get a safer rotation towards the choke point very soon. As you can see, they picked up one kill point, and that's moved them up into first play. So Legends Gaming now our front runners, something that perhaps uh, some people who've been watching LAN last year might have expected, might have, uh, you know, might have uh, predicted uh, with how good they were and the obvious potential that this team has. Spot out Akuma quickly to Legends Gaming. They want to make a foothold to push forward into the ring later on and keep their back safe as much as possible. Overlook though, on the other hand, they're in danger now because Kill Devil is over there by Harvester. They're still topping on up, getting those heals back for Levy and the rest. Getting very close though, and actually the Wuhan gonna get knocked. Levy didn't make it to the med pack too, and Kill Devil, they're only left to one still standing, but it's a game of heals instead of a fight. Oh no, I don't, I don't think Overlooks really want to take this fight though, regardless. Like, I mean, you know, we're inside uh, uh. zone three now. That's just an ugly, ugly spot. I think they might just leave them uh, to the ring's own devices here. Yeah, they're gonna go straight in towards uh the landslide tunnel where they actually will uh not find any resistance so that's a stroke of luck honestly you would expect a team to potentially be playing gatekeeper there but no it's further inside that lightning unicorn and outside are holding those uh those positions uh as we noted kill devil not really able to recover from that or at least the two members uh looks like hueha is 
maybe gonna make it into the oh. ring but at this point he's got one med kit left uh no evac tower and a long way to go so i wouldn't be surprised if he meets uh a pretty ugly fate yeah it's a heartbreaker half of, two of them half a second away from healing up still getting knocked out the god hand on the other hand they've had a lot of god spot here to work with boogie border so it keep going moving forward together and now keep going has to deal with sw on an elevated angle here towards the side of south countdown keep going gaming now trying to stay in cover more monster fire burns rain fire also noticing these cluster of players now coming up together as kill devil will be eliminated and confirmed by the ring overlook has got it in there but heroes will be gatekeeping them on the other side so here we go god hand still watching out but heroes and overlook having their own fight so far team okay burger. so team burger here they've managed to get slightly better loot um sharky was Himself on that side, as the other two were just making sure no one was creeping up behind them in the tunnel. And then we look at uh, Overlook's entertainment. Um, these guys playing up from Landslide are gonna have to go up against Lightning Unicorn. Big window for Overlook Entertainment now with Heroes out. This basically Ooh. secures the win for Legends Gaming, unless one of the top five teams put in a monstrous performance like the Unicorn Dope. Looks to wrap up a few more points to get up the leaderboards. Already harassing the APC. Fence is now out in the open, but Lalabang is down. Jack Youth will suffer a similar fate. And Overlook Entertainment, watch out for them because they mean business. They're still too standing as they try to hold off anyone else coming their way. Lightning Unicorn in trouble, but look who's coming now. It's Legends Gaming yet again. Third party is the call, and you know Strafing Flame has meant a business all throughout. It's an easy wipe courtesy of Legends Gaming, and they are just going to be mounting even more points now to build this lead. And you were talking about the momentum for Legends Gaming. There it is uh, in full force as they take control of the south side of the zone. That RV is actually prime real estate right now, Dax. I mean, God Hand is still sitting in it, and they will be in there for Zone uh, 4 as well. Zone 5 will pull a little bit further out to these rocks that we're seeing right now. Um, that will be the final battleground uh, with a cluster of teams sitting over towards the uh, last vestiges of... Uh, of uh <laughs> of support that they've got the uh uh you know over it over over countdown um and then we've got a couple of teams fighting over the tower as well like team burger as well as white flash and serenity also pitching on and they're down below and serenity is the one hurting here team burger finally finding their fangs here at the last game dreamfire on the other hand also pitching in with some kills from northern countdown so familiarity really does breed success here for dreamfire swq though eliminated now and it's akuma tried to wade through all the smoke and all the shenanigans akuma over into the corner keep going on the other hand also gonna get eliminated legends gaming they're playing out to the southwest they have to deal with more monster fireboard but we're watching out first already they still they found the reprieve towards the rocks this is a relatively safe spot compared to everything else for serenity now serenity a fantastic spot god hand are finally starting to push out now that they know where this final circle is you can see white flash have access to quite a bit of ammo and supplies up here at the top of the tower typically a spot that's quite hard to play you take a lot of damage so you need a lot of meds to play it but once you get into this position uh where there's not a lot of high ground spots that people can shoot at you it becomes phenomenal for picking up kp legends on the bottom they've tried to make a move but seem to be struggling against serenity they do manage to get back up now with that gold res and all of a sudden it feels like serenity and legends can they coexist down the bottom here or will one of them be taking out this game yeah they're having a bit of a sand of serenity stuff between the rock and the hard place and legends gaming is just barreling down on them an avalanche is approaching courtesy of legends gaming and serenity are the ones in the path of that destruction our monster firebird though eliminated now we are down to our final five squads three and far watching out for the card all the way still by countdown god hand sitting pretty inside the apc but this has been the story of legends gaming does it end here as the rolling thunder will be the play Dreamfire looking for that opportunity they've slain boogie borders in a different map can they slay legends gaming now to get back 
to a potential good spot. Roy and 3MC in the front line. Here we go with White Flash 2 chipping on in. And Legends is the one cornered here like rats. They're stuck in the middle and they're hurting because of it. Three fire now. They take down one and they hold them off for the time being. Yeah, victims of uh, there's great positioning there. So many ults were used to take Legends gaming out of that position. Player K uh, will shortly be removed. So, with EMP on the horizon now for Dreamfire, can they use this to eliminate the last two squads? God Hand played their spot well, picking up four kills so far as they try and move in to finish off the remaining members of White Flash. After that, we should see the final battle between Dreamfire and God Hand. Yeah, newer squads versus the veterans of Dreamfire. God Hand looking to make an impact right here, right now. And down goes White Flash. It's now two squads left. Dreamfire on one side of the veil. God Hand on the other. And Dreamfire now wrapping on around. Yet again, they isolate the first. And they eliminate Acquaintance immediately. It's been a good run for God Hand. Can it get even better? Dreamfire denying that destiny. They're downing two already. And this is what... What we've been expecting from Dreamfire! The flame is finally lit and they take the last map of the set! <laughs> Peter even bringing out the B1 blade there to get a nice couple of hits in and take the final game here on World's Edge doing their best dojo impression or should I say 100 Thieves uh, uh, no, disguised, no, sorry, no. disguised <laughs> impression. Uh, now that they have changed orgs here to come back and try and bring things back in game six to help their way up the standings. But as we saw earlier on in that, heroes were trying to hold on um, to their game, but unfortunately went out a little bit early and uh, just gave up. So that means uh, we will have Legends Gaming coming <laughs> out on top of our standings here. Everyone's eyes still have to be on Dreamfire after that one. It's Dreamfire finally doing Dreamfire things with 15 KP with first place. That rockets them up to at least a manageable scoreline and take some lead points down the line here. But it got very dicey to begin this game genome. Contest towards stacks, contest towards skyhooks. It was urban warfare. We even liked it so much, we took two of it. This was beautiful place from Lightning Unicorn as well. Why they really innovated with that crypto EMP into the nades, finally getting through the pylon that was broken. Also some moments there from Team Burger. But when it got down to business, from countdown to the destruction of other teams, it was Dreamfire having a stellar angle to work with. Yeah, they played that in-game very well. Uh, the ultimate usage particularly um, is what helped them out, being able to push several teams away from them and buying a lot of space there at the end. You've got to consider, especially um, Jax, that they don't have a catalyst player, right? And you, you, we've seen how especially important that legend is in those end circles. They're not buying space for themselves with Catwall. Um, they're buying it with aggression. Uh, and damage. So um, you can see right there, that is a classic Dreamfire banger. 15 yeah. kills and a win, 6k damage. Roy pops off 3k, 3MZ picking up the, the lion's share of the kills there, and they just soak up the kills and the damage in game six. Dreamfire, <sighs> are they back? Uh, question what? mark? Maybe this is a start and if you have been playing a little bit of ALGS bingo and have been waiting to shade the Dreamfire pop off square This has to be that one 15 kills and you you said it just the conduit itself Doing incredible work to keep the pace going for Dreamfire and with that being said that puts them in sixth place Not too shabby after a really rough start especially on storm point you got vintage Dreamfire finding familiarity in, I'd say, familiar grounds with the ring pulls, especially towards that countdown at the end. But of course, the spotlight still, it needs to go to Legends Gaming. They did everything they needed in game number five to propel them to a win here in game number six. Heroes taking second though after a good start in Storm Point. Outside, still with a bit of consistency, making it to the top three. No credit, keep going gaming. Some standouts as well to wrap up the top five. 
And as a recap, we have, again, six different winners throughout the series. Uh, no one coming close to that bonus point today. And, uh, yeah, a couple of surprises and a couple of stalwarts there. Storm point, uh, you know, having the teams that, uh, you know, perhaps were searching for those points a little more. And then World's Edge, uh, obviously one of the longest homes of competitive gaming in Apex, going very much over to our titans of the Apex South region. Yeah, and at least right now the pecking order it's getting very much so contentious it does feel like it was more so some of the familiar faces we expect taking dubs getting it by the end but your faces enjoyable games and the likes of keep going gaming the likes of no credit finding their marks yet again on that map but let's look at that scoreboard as well just want to check out how everything has gone so far after adding in the second set of a versus b which means legends gaming and heroes will take the top two spots boogie border still there in third and it does propel wanton dumpling or rather put them down towards seven but they haven't played as of yet and seems like 55 really is the marker wanton dumpling will be looking forward to try and break moving forward here genome yeah exactly so there's you know a little bit of an asterisk here now it's that everyone hasn't necessarily played the same amount of games um but yeah like the fact that legends and heroes are up the top there is uh is pretty good legends now moving ahead um so you know they were looking okay throughout the start of the season but it feels like they're firing now they're they're getting reacclimatized. Uh, you know, obviously they had to play such a different style at LAN, you know, they were a team who made something out of nothing, Landslide, the so-called unplayable POI that they took and steered into a third place. But here they get, you know, Lava Siphon, uh, they get Cedo Station, they get these fantastic POIs, and that drastically changes how they can play the game. Uh, especially when considering the other kind of teams they're playing against, it feels like a very much, very much a gear shift here from Legends Gaming, and they are finally running in top gear and not only that they still have another set to play it's double duty for group a because they are going to be facing off against group c after this elongated break it has been fun to watch a versus b it's been great to see some of the amazing plays so far here in eight packs out and we know you you want more after this one so we'll take this break we'll be right back and we'll see you guys on the other side Undisputed champions of Apex South in the ALGS. But the good spot here provides any much coverage wow. for popcorn. Bradley kicks down and out already. Bristol strike. Oh, must come down. Might be one. Might be one. Oh, what? Well, Shady oh. he finds the target. Hey, that's gonna be a punishing blow. Three is cover. Fly high to set by. The wraparound is perfect. What? No! Look to overextend! So does Kashyyyk! Oh, oh, and... Gets spotted out. The pings go down! Oh my god! 